Dan Marshall, Washington Redskins quarterback, Heath Schuler. Gentlemen, start your engines. The field of 37 is warm to life here at Bristol, Tennessee. Folks, the rains have moved away, the track is drying, and we are set for racing 500 laps here at Thunder Valley, the Food City 500. The guy behind me, Rusty Wallace. It's his 10th anniversary. This race, 10 years ago, he won his first Winston Cup race. He has since won five times at Bristol, four in the spring event. And folks, Rusty just said, hey, Doc, we got something for him today. Watch this Miller Ford. We may start 11th, but we're not going to be here for very long. Up. Jerry, let's take a look at the starting lineup for this Food City 500. The pole sitter is Mark Martin, his third straight pole here at Bristol, 29th of his career outside Terry Labonte, the 96th leader in laps led. In row number two, it's Daryl Waltrip, first 96 start in the top 10, alongside Sterling Marlin, four races in the top 10 here at Bristol. In the third row, in his 100th NASCAR Winston Cup start, Bobby Labonte and Mike Skinner in his 12th NASCAR Winston Cup event. The fourth row, the points leader, Dale Jarrett, and outside, the defending 1995 Winston Cup champion and the defending champion of this race, Jeff Gordon. Back in row five comes Ricky Rudd. All finishes this year in the top 10 and Kenny Wallace who's been a, had a great run in 1996. Rusty Wallace back in row six. Jerry Punch just told you all about him and Ward Burton in the Pontiac, NBA Pontiac will start outside. Row seven, Ricky Craven. Great run at, Mar at Rockin' Darlington last week and Hut Strickland. And in row eight, we find Jimmy Spencer, an exciting driver to watch, especially on this racetrack, and Ernie Irvin in the Haviland Ford. Row number nine, we find Derek Cope in the Bobby Allison car, along with Morgan Shepard, who had his best run of the year last week at Darlington. And in row number 10, we find Dale Earnhardt. Watch for him to come up through the pack, and Joe Nemechek, who spun out on his second lap of qualifying. And there are 19 positions on the front stretch for Pitts, so Dale Earnhardt has the last one. All of these drivers will be pitting on the back stretch, back stretch including the Bodine brothers in 21st and 22nd starting positions. The 12th row, Robert Presley and Bobby Hamilton. Row number 13 has Michael Waltrip and Lake Speed. The 14th row, it's Elton Sawyer in car number 27 and Ken Schrader in 25. Back in row 15 is Dick Trickle and Ted Musgrave. Row 16, Wally Dallin back and Rick Mass, the last car got in field qualifying. The provisionals for this race. And the provisionals are in row 17, Jeff Burton and Kyle Petty. In row 18, we find Jeremy Mayfield and Steve Grissom. And Bill Elliott taking the champion's provisional. Obviously, Elliott had the chance to take a points provisional but chose to take the champions provisional and that allowed one more car to start this food city 500 and look at this the separation in terms of time between the fastest and the 32nd uh, fastest point three one one seconds and as you saw at the very beginning of the show that's just about the amount of time it takes you to blink your eyes that's less than a hundredth of a second per car yep unbelievable Bernard's well, he's rather thing. relaxed, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> There's our pole sitter, uh, Mark Martin. Let's take a look at our race analysis. 500 laps, the event record held by Cale Yarborough way back in 1977 at 100.989 miles an hour. Our pole speed, 123 and a half by Mark Martin. They'll be pitting for tires between laps 115 and 120, and they'll be going for a purse in excess of $1.3 million. The uh, Unical bonus money is way up there today. Look at it, $121,600. That's only for Mark Martin if he goes on to win. And the NASCAR Winston Cup leader bonus has jumped up to $40,000 if the winner is also the points leader at the end of the event. The cars begin to roll away and we're about 35 minutes past our scheduled time, but the green flag is moments away. ESPN 
Speed World coverage of the Food City 500 from Bristol International Raceway being brought to you by Firestone and your neighborhood Firestone Tire and Service Centers. By Texaco Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Controls volatility and fights vaporization. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. By Pontiac, proud sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. We are driving excitement. And by the NASCAR Story. To order, call 871-NASCAR. How are we looking out there, guys? About ready to go green, you think? Oh, yeah. That racetrack is in good shape. Yes, it is. 37 cars include 21 Fords, 12 Chevys, and four Pontiacs. We have a Ford and a Chevy on the front row. Now let's take a look at our in-car cameras that we'll have for you today. We have several of them. This is Kyle Petty's car. The camera is right on the right front fender. Of Kyle Petty's car. So he'll show us how close he gets to that wall and exactly. other cars. Here's Kenny Schrader. We have a roof cam and a panning rear bumper cam on Kenny Schrader's car. And there's some raindrops hitting the oh, camera lens. I hope you wouldn't notice. <laughs> Michael Waltrip, a lot of cars up there for Michael to pass. He has uh, a roof cam and a panning rear bumper also. Rusty Wallace has an in-car and a roof cam. Not quite as many cars ahead of him. And with absolutely nobody ahead of him is our pole center, Mark Martin, or an inside camera, a roof cam, and a panning rear bumper. And you can see that the light is out of top the pace car. We'll be going green next time. Mark Martin making his 300th start of the day, Hud Strickland his 200th, and Bobby Labonte his 100th. Hard to believe that Mark Martin has not led a lap in NASCAR Winston Cup competition this year, but I think that's yeah, going to change yes. here very shortly. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> Well, we wonder whether or not there was enough rain that fell to wash off the rubber that was put down by the Bush race yesterday and make this a totally green racetrack. I guess we'll be finding that out within a few laps after the green comes out, and we are just about ready for that moment. I don't think it rained that much, Bob. I don't either. It really did. The crowd rises to its feet, and the green is out. The Food City 500 underway from Bristol. his first lap of the year you got to get down to the inside and Sterling Marlin didn't has fallen all the way back to fifth position but Ernie. now they begin to get in single file formation Joe Nemechek is hung out yeah Ernie Urban was Ernie finally got back down again after uh, about a lap and a half but Joe Nemechek still out there the car still going back down on the inside it's Bobby Hamilton to the inside and Michael Waltrip back of Hamilton as they come off the corner and on the straightaway again and still Nemechek unable to get back in line. Tell you what, Nemechek is running pretty doggone fast on the outside. I'm yeah, impressed. Really? Yeah, he's running good out there. In fact, he, he had an opportunity to there to get back down, it looked like, and Morgan Shepard came on hungry, but I believe that he could have gotten down there, but he chose to stay out there. Maybe he likes it. This is Kyle Petty's car. Look at the shot there. Man, oh man. This in-car camera is fun, and it, oh, I thought Kyle was going to The camera, as we can see, does revolve. Ooh, thank goodness for that. By the way, Rick Mast is a little under the weather, suffering from the flu, and he has David Green standing by to reef or leaf drive if necessary. And there is Rick Mast in the number one car. Here's Schrader. That's Elton Sawyer, the 27 car, the unsponsored vehicle in the in front of Schrader. Jeff Gordon just passed Ricky Rudd for the seventh position. Here's Rudd, Kenny Wallace, and Rusty Wallace. There you can see their eighth, ninth, and tenth on your scoring pylon in the upper left of your screen. The bar simply separates the first five 
five from the second five. It doesn't mean that the second five is a lap down or anything. That's just a way of making it easier for you to look up and see who's running where. You know, we add the uh, manufacturers and the names to the pylon. And we got six Chevys and two Fords in the top ten, but a Ford driven by Martin sets the pace at the moment. Now here's Jeff Gordon coming up on Mike Skinner. That's the Richard Childress second car. And that sponsor you see is Real Tree Camouflage Clothing. Mm, is right there, isn't he? Things continue to uh, look better weather-wise, although you do, do see some raindrops on the camera lens there, but it's getting much brighter, and we may even see the sun here before too long. Here's Morgan Shepard moving to the inside of Derry Cope as Ernie Irvin tried to come along but couldn't. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon does take over the sixth position from Skinner. There we see how far Jeff Gordon has to go to catch the 18 car of Bobby Labonte. There's a battle for third spot. Daryl Walker, the 17, Western Auto Car, and Sterling Marlin, Kodak Film Chevrolet. If you haven't heard, Jeff Hammond is back with Daryl Waltrip. Pete Peterson remains as a crew chief. Jeff just in there to kind of bring the team together and get Daryl Walter back up in the front again. And I don't know whether it was coincidence or not, but Daryl Walter had his best starting position of 96. He started this race from third position. Now we come around about almost a half lap, maybe a quarter. There is the leader, Mark Martin, who uh, has separated himself a little bit from Terry Lamani, running second. In another 10 laps, he's going to catch the tail end of this match, of this field. And that's when business is going to really pick up. All these fellas trying their best to stay. Yeah, we see the group of cars, the first group that Mark Martin will encounter. There's Dale Jarrett in the 88 car, the points leader, Bill Elliott. Jeremy Mayfield. And we remind you that Dale Jarrett had to drop to the back of the field. He's in a backup car because he crashed on the second lap of his qualifying effort after turning in a very quick lap and, in fact, the seventh best. Here comes Dale Earnhardt charging up on Ricky Craven. And Earnhardt has already moved up. Uh, let's see. We're not even showing him on our screen here right now. So he's, he's a bit, he has moved up to about 15th position. There we go. He's running in the 14th spot at the moment. Started 19th, and he picks off another as he goes to the bottom side and passes Ricky Craven. He's up to 13th right now. And who's ahead of Dale Earnhardt? Well, it's Hut Strickland, Ward Burton, and Ricky Rudd. See the eight car Hutz Trip and Circuit City sponsorship. Uh, Frank Birchfield was with the Western Auto. People have moved over to run the Circuit City Motorsports program, and he is excited with that job. How close does it get here, Benny? Yeah, well, let's see. Man, we drove that camera right up on the left rear tire. <laughs> and there's a mark on the left. <laughs> yes. Our camera has a tire mark on it. <laughs> Steve Grissom just got lapped, so he's the first to go a lap down. And that was the car that uh, our camera ran up on. The tire mark on the camera. <laughs> had a great uh -oh. run yesterday in the push race, but has already lost a lap. It's barely sprinkling right now, not enough to get the track damp and to uh, put a, out a caution. But now we see Rusty Wallace trying to take the uh, position away from Mike Skinner. Yeah, he's really been working on him. As uh, looked like Robert Pesky went around the Michael Walker car. But Rusty has really been working on Mike Skinner, but he just can't get around him. Riding with Michael Walter, he started 25th, has moved up two positions. And he drives right up on the back bumper of Robert Presley. 
Mark Martin's been able to pull out on Rick Mast. Who, by the way, Rick and Sharon are expecting twins. We congratulate them. Yes, yeah, they're the not triplets. Well, how many said? Oh, it's two. It's yeah. just oh, twins. Okay, back to dark. Yep. The first set they thought they were going to be on Okay. Here's Labonte also passing some traffic. There's Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte. And there is Rusty, who's still trying to get around Skinner. Skinner leaves the door open there in the second corner, but Rusty didn't have the momentum to get around him. And Jeff Gordon is on the move. And it's Skinner is now. Oh, I thought he was going to let Rusty come back. And, uh, almost had some contact between those two cars. That's Mike Skinner in the 31 and Rusty Wallace, the two. Oh, trouble up here in turn four. We have Lake Speed, Elton Sawyer. Oh, in trouble. And Sterling Marlin was also involved in the crash. Sterling Marlin was on the move. He had just passed Waltrip, but the first caution is out on the 31 lap, and Lake Speed's car is most damaged from this accident. The car slid clear across the racetrack, and fortunately, nobody hit him, but the damage had already been done when he hit the fourth turn outside wall. Tell you what, Kenny Schrader. Yeah, he was involved, man. He's got some pretty good damage on his automobile as well. Well, you can figure that there's an early accident. Ken Schrader is going to be involved in it. That seems the way things are going for him. Let's take a look. Lake Speed jumps on the brakes to avoid hitting the 87 car of Joe Nemechek. And behind him, while he's trying to get her control, the 25 and set 27 of Elton Sawyer, they make contact. That was not part of the Lake Speed wreck, but he ended up getting in the wreck because of those two cars behind him. There is Elton. He's out of the car. Okay, but a lot of damage to the Ford. So a big break for a number of cars that were about to go a lap down. A few already had. I remember when I used to could do that jump up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Bill. And Elton Sawyer has just climbed out of his car and run across the track. He's taking off his heat shield, off his heel. What happened? Well, I'm not real sure. Uh, the nine car got a little loose down in three, and uh, you know I had to check up a little bit. Kenny didn't have anywhere to go. You know, it's it's pretty tight out there at Bristol. It's unfortunate, you know, I hate it, David. Uh, I know he's back in Arkansas sponsorship hunting, but uh, these guys really worked hard this week. My car's tore up, but we'll be back at Wilkesboro. And they have been working hard, and we'll see them next time out, two weeks at Wilkesboro. Elton Sawyer out of competition here after a crash. It's Martin, Terry Labonte, Jeff Gordon, Daryl Waldrop, and Bobby Labonte, the top five after 32 laps. Under caution because of a crash up in turns three and four. And as you can see, there is a little bit of precipitation also falling as the pit crews come out and try to keep pit area as dry as possible. This is Kenny Schrader's bumper cam. I'll tell you, I don't know. and you hear the spotter tell him, come on, come on, come on. And here is how it looked from the grandstand. Lake Speed just went up there and almost hit Joe Nemechek, hit the brakes to keep from hitting him. Then went a little high on the racetrack. Kenny Schrader saw an opening apparently down on the inside. He jumped up in there. He and Elton Sawyer got together, and you see the results. Let's go to the pits and John Kern. Schrader has pulled it behind the wall. His crew working on the right front suspension. The lower control arm on the right front is bent. They are going to have to replace that, so Schrader is going to be behind the wall for quite a while. Another tough break for Kenny Schrader, who finds himself uh, behind the wall and uh, looking for repairs in the early going. The green comes out. Steve Grissom's right front tire is flat. Can you imagine just when the car, the green flag, discovers that his right front tire is completely flat? He's got to go to the pits. Meanwhile, back to racing. Yeah, he could have come into the pits and during that caution and changed that had he known he was flat, but he didn't know it. Green flag. <laughs> Darrell Walton trying to get by Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy had just gone the lap down right before the caution came out. Now Bobby Labonte 
trying to work to the inside of Jeremy. Here's Steve Grissom. They're getting that flat right front change. They have done so. Steve rolls back out of the Cartoon Network Chevy. Ooh, Dale Jarrett and, and Jeff Burton got together coming off the of turn two, but it's a crash up here in turn three, four. Oh, and Bobby oh. Hamilton. Man, oh, man. It, it, it's so fast and the groove is so narrow, there's just no place to go. Just exactly what you guys talked about at the beginning of the show as they come back to the line. Wally Dallenbach trying but failing to get a lap back. And so a couple of more cars are damaged. Kenny Wallace and especially Bobby Hamilton. I mentioned that situation between Dale Jarrett and Jeff Burton. As they came off the turn two, Jarrett was following Burton and uh, he got into it a little bit. Burton's car got a little bit sideways and then he went down to the inside track. Burton did, but they didn't. They both took up straight out and went on. We can see some pretty serious damage to the square D car. When the left front tire is knocked off like that, that means the suspension is going to be bent more than likely. Let's see if we can tell exactly what happened with Kenny Wallace. We see Hutt Strickland down on the inside, some contact. Kenny goes up the racetracks, tries his best to save it, makes some contact with the outside wall, comes down, car's going by, and the scoreboard's going to get in the way, I do believe. But Bobby Hamilton's going to come along right there and makes a hit. We'll get the impact of Hamilton and uh, Wallace from a better angle right here. There's Earnhardt, and I think Ward Burton barely does make some contact. Maybe not. But here there's no place for Hamilton to go because Jeff Bodine, he drives up right in the left front with his right front. Mm. From Michael Waltrip's uh, in-car roof cam. Just to the left of uh, Michael as he came around, he was unscathed, but there from the uh, in-car camera is the work that's going on at Bobby Hamilton and Kenny Wallace's car is being taken behind the wall for repairs. 43 laps completed out of 500. Welcome back to ESPN Speed World today from Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee. The Food City 500 under caution for the second time. 45 laps completed. This is the bumper cam on the pole sitter and current leader Mark Martin's car. Looking back on Wally Dallenbach who is a lap down in 29th position. The men's final at the Lipton Championships. Agassi and Ivanisevich up next after the conclusion of our coverage. And then Sports Center comes along at 6 o'clock tonight. Following that at 6.30, the championship game in the Women's Basketball NCAA Tournament and then the opening night of Sunday Night Baseball at 9 o'clock Eastern Time tonight. Here's Bill Weber. And Kenny Wallace sits in his car talking to his team owner, Philip Martasi. We'll lean in here. You're okay? What happened? Yeah, I'm all right. Just, you know, I don't want to blame anybody. I really don't. I guess I just got, I guess I come down on the eight car a little bit. You know, I didn't know he had position on me and, uh, just this way it is at Bristol. You just get real close here and try to get it fixed. Okay, square D car pretty badly bruised. Guys rolling through turn four, ready to take the green. He sits helplessly behind the wall getting repairs while the field comes around and takes the green flag for a restart of this event. As now Mark Martin tries to keep Wally Dolan back a lap down and will do so. You see Jeff Gordon has gotten by Darrell Walton taking over the third spot. Jeremy Mayfield has fresh tires. We'll see if that's an event. Mayfield has lost a lap in 30th position. So has Jeff Burton, the 90th car. He's 31st. See Dale Earnhardt's move to the top 10. Here, Ben, is a Fran Field summary as you look for your favorite driver, whoever it might be, with their starting positions in parenthesis. Who is your favorite driver, by the way, Benny? I don't have one. <laughs> like them all, right? I like them all. I don't care who wins, but when they do win, it thrills me to death. <laughs> Sterling Marlin trying his best to get by the 31 car. And Mike Skinner. Rusty Wallace right behind Sterling. 28 cars on the lead lap. 
Turtle just trying to move over, get out of the mirror of the 31 car, hoping that he will move over. Oh, and a little bump from the back that almost lifted the rear wheels off the ground. And Steve Grissom, the 29 car, more problems headed for the pits. Skinner, he uh, maintained control despite the fact that he got way out of shape. And he did he ever. This is Rusty's roof cam. Sterling looking to the inside again. John Kernan is with Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton sits behind the wall. A lot of front end damage on rescue team with Pontiac. Bobby, what happened? Looked like the 81 car got loose and somebody bumped him. He cut down across the racetrack. We all started scrambling and I got on that black asphalt and it's not dry down there yet. I couldn't steer. I hit the brake and just slid straight into it. Well, he said this was a concrete car. It runs well on concrete. Of course, nothing runs well on wet asphalt. Now watch this. Mike Skinner is now on the outside, and he's probably going to lose seven or eight spots before he can get back to the inside. There he loses one. There he loses two to Rusty Wallace. How about Earnhardt? Is he going to give his teammate any slack here? Uh, uh, he sees an opportunity to pass a race car. By the way, Richard Childress says maybe a two-car team in 96 or 97, almost definitely a two-car team in 98, but this is just a test. They're going to run a few races this Ooh. year. Oh! Control. He got under Mike Skinner and finally does hit the wall with a left front, and he's broken the tie rod or something. The wheel won't turn, and in the wall he goes, and then I don't know who's got worse luck, him or Bobby Hamilton. Or Ken Schrader. Or Ken Schrader, yeah. Man, oh man. Another caution comes out as Burton's car is disabled at the bottom of the racetrack here on the main straightaway down toward turn number one. It's our third caution of the afternoon already. Skinner was trying his best to get the, back to the bottom of the racetrack because he had lost, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four positions and was about to lose that fifth. He wanted to get back to the bottom and here comes all the cars down pit road. And it's still a little wet in there. Let's see if anybody has any trouble. They come into their assigned pits, which of course are dry because they keep tarps down there. Here's Jerry. Right side tires going on the Valvoline Ford. They make the chassis adjustment one round the bite of the car. Mark said the car is a little bit loose in the corner. Left side of Terry Labonte's Kellogg's Chevrolet. Here is the Valvoline car down and away. Great pit stop for B. Mill and company. But Jeff Gordon is the first out pitting in the far end of the row. Jeff, of course, because he's the series champion from last year, gets to pick first and picks the uh, first spot off of uh, turn number one. And that is a decided advantage when you're getting in and out of the pits. Let's take a look again at why we're under caution. There we see Skinner. Earnhardt goes by. He tries to come down. And we see Ward Burton's wheels are forced out on the left side wheels are forced out on the blacktop and he comes up makes contact with Skinner and tries his best to keep off Skinner when he does that spins his car Is that the way you see it there man yep and, and his left wheel hit the inside wall here it is again he gets all along up to the door and then they make contact and around Ward goes and his left front wheel the tire itself is going to hit that wall, and that's what's going to do the biggest damage. He'll have some sheet metal damage, but uh, I think he broke a tie rod or something like that. I'll tell you what, Skinner did a great job in saving that car. And Rudd just barely missed the back end of Ward's car. Now watch the left front wheel that Ned's talking about. It's going to hit the wall right there, and yep. just damages that thing severely. So Ward Burton is behind the wall and fixing the damage. 61 laps are now complete. We'll take another break from Bristol, Tennessee. We've only missed about a lap and a half. We have a couple of cars who have gotten laps back, namely Jeff Burton and Wally Dallenbach. The leader of the race is Mike Skinner. We talked earlier about how Mark Martin led for the first time this year. This is the first time that Mike Skinner has ever led that NASCAR Winston Cup race. And Skinner decided not to pit during that last caution flag, and he ends up... But what you meant was that these fellows are on the tail end of the lead lap, right? Right. Because they're in front of Mike Skinner, the leader. Here comes Rusty. Alongside Ted Musgrave as they go wheel to wheel into the corner. And Hut Strickland, the A-car circuit, City car, got a good run going today. Sure does. 
Here comes Sterling Marlin as the Musgrave car goes up the banking and loses more spots. Jimmy Spencer, the 23 car, dives to the inside. There's Jeff Bodine, the seven car. He put it on the back stretch. Evidently, he only changed two tires because he was able to get back on the racetrack in front of Jeff Gordon. Here's Mark Martin in seventh spot up ahead is Gordon. And Skinner spins. The leader of the race spins and oh, almost at another involvement, but I believe everybody's going to survive. Wow, and there is no caution. No caution flag and some damage to the rear of Skinner's car. He's trying to camouflage that thing. <laughs> now Bill Elliott becomes the leader. And Skinner heads for pit road. Let's see if he goes out in turn three. Goes in the corner, just goes sideways. Up the hill he goes and bats around the fence. Bill Elliott did not pit on this last stop. He, he did, last caution, he did make a pit stop a little bit earlier. Joe Nemechek also had contact with the wall because he is in the pit area. Out on the, uh, the uh, back stretch. Back stretch. See some heavy damage to the left front of his car. See where they're pulling the fender off the tire now. see if we can find out what happened with Nemechek from our speed shot. Oh, yeah, he hit it pretty good coming off the fourth corner. Yeah, he and Derek Cope looks like made some contact as he exited the corner. Skinner rolls out. Back in the race. And Jerry is with Ward Burton. Ward standing and watching and work on the NBA Pontiac. Ward, incredible. If you didn't have any bad luck, you wouldn't have any at all. What happened out there? I guess it's just race. I just wish I'd get the monkey off my back. I know you got to be frustrated. How bad is the car hurt? That sure didn't help it any. I think it's some of the front suspension. We'll get it fixed and get back out there. Well, Ward standing very stoically watching as they're trying to piece this car together two weeks in a row. I mean, what kind of luck can this team have? Please, Jerry said stand stoically. Does that mean he's mad? I think that'd be a good, a good term. Jeff Gordon working on Jeff Bodine. Mark Martin right behind him watching that. I guess pensive would be a, a good term for that also, Benny. I don't know what that means either. No, I don't know what that means. <laughs> you know, Jeff Bodine's missing part of his rear bumper. Yeah, he is. Man, see that left side of it's gone. Yep. He must have been in some kind of shunt before. See, if he had that rear bumper, he would probably hit him right there. But since he don't have the bumper, he missed him. Well, the bumper's there. It's just been jammed up in, under the car. Yeah. And look how close they are. <laughs> that rear bumper has the perfect shape of the front end of another car. You know what? Yeah, we could probably look at the, at the paint on the bumper and find out who it is. Huh? Sterling Marlin and... Dale Earnhardt are running right together with Hutt Strickland and Daryl Waltrip. This yep. is uh, 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Evidently, they did something exciting because all the fans stood up and yelled just a moment ago. I think Earnhardt was trying to pass on the outside of Marlin, and the fans rose from their seats. Back, meanwhile, to Bodine and Gordon. <laughs> Boy, Jeff looked like he had a good run there, but couldn't get the job done. Body is catching up to this group. Pretty good distance from Terry back to the next car, which is Robert Presley, and he has been holding up Rob, Rob, Rusty Wallace, and now he moves over to let Rusty go. Just a two point. Oh, now this is going to be interesting here now. Look at this. <laughs> Boy, what a gutsy move by Jeff Gordon. Well, he and he lost, lost a spot to uh, Mark Martin, who's lucky to bring race car. Back. Exactly. Here's Bill Weber with Mike Skinner. Great qualifying run, but you're behind the wall early. What happened? Well, I'll tell you, the real tree uh, camouflage, Monte Carlo was running awfully good. 
we missed the pit stop. We stayed out, was leading the race, and uh, I was arcing the car real high, getting in the corner because it was real tight, trying to get it to turn. I just got the right rear up in that wet stuff up there and lost it. But you wish you pitted now. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, we sure do. Yeah, that's Mike Skinner, and they're really working hard to get this thing back out there. And this is a really good little battle here among Bodine, Martin, and Jeff Gordon. You can see that the interval between the first and the sixth place car is only 2.4 seconds. And Jeff Gordon, I think, started to try to pass on the outside in turn three last lap. Well, I just saw way back in the field that Ricky Craven passed Dale Jarrett on the outside. That was a pretty impressive situation. So maybe that second group might be uh, coming in. Coming huh? in. Martin wants to take a look on the inside. Terry Labonte has joined this battle. Where might we have another battle? Here it is. Marlin still running back there with uh, Strickland, Earnhardt, Darrell Walker. And the half the field. Yeah, yeah. and others. Yeah, that's a long line right there. Robert Presley. Yeah, he was up in front of it a while back. And Presley Wallace got around him. Rusty has driven away. Bobby Romani got around the car number 33 of Robert Presley. He hasn't driven away that much. Now DW goes on the inside. Oh, oh he's down there on the wet, but he saved it. Now a little bit of contact. I'm telling you what, he had two tires on that black stuff. And that's not the place to be. We've seen today that's really not a good place to race. Chris is about to get a lap back from Bill Elliott, trying to, while we watch this action. Steve Grissom is playing so that's not a significant situation. Got some debris on the uh, straightaway here. Don't know what it is, but uh, it's rolling around out there. Looks like it's to the inside of the crew. There's, these, there's Steve Grissom trying his best. And here comes Rick Mast. Well, he might have changed drivers. Nope, he's, he's still in there. He's still in the car. He's down, so yeah. he's trying to get that uh, left back. No, he's, no, he's, no, he's second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. And Trickle in number 19 is third. So we got at least uh, two guys who were at the back of the pack a while ago, but because they didn't come in, are uh, right up there. And now Bodine and Terry Labonte are battling together. Yeah, we, Mark Martin has been able to get by Jeff Bodine. Also, Jeff. Gordon's been able to get by. Terry Labonte is trying his best to get by. Not been able to. He's finally got a run now. Yep. Jeff is going to try to hold the spot as long as he can. They love coming off the corner, but Terry goes around. And Rush did try to come right in there as well, and he does. And here comes Wally Dollin back. And he's the one that's one left there. Yes. Huh? A little mixed up there a while ago. Sorry about that, Rick Mass fans. Leader of the race is Bill Elliott. First time that he's led here at Bristol since this race in 89. Michael Walton the sit go car as he looks back at Kyle Petty. This is a camera from inside Kyle's car. On the right front fender as a matter of fact of Kyle Petty's car. It's a great shot. You can get a good perspective of speed there. Mike Skinner is finished for the day. First car officially out of the race. Darrell Walter is on the inside of Robert Presley. He goes by. Hutt Strickland goes by. It looks like the line is going by. There we see Robert. Earnhardt goes by. Sterling Marlin. Here comes Jimmy Spencer. Michael Walter. Robert said, man, oh, man, quit. Give me a break. Somebody cut me some slack. going be a couple of more before he gets a chance to get to the inside. Back in the All right, it's Elliot, Rick Mass, Jeff Gordon has moved up to third, then Mark Martin and Dick Trickle, your top five after exactly 100 of the 500 laps in the Food City 500. We'll be right back. Bristol International Raceway, where ESPN Speed World covering the Food City 500, presented by Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Summer Games. This Bud's for you. 
by Pennzoil, the motor oil that works like liquid ball bearings. Buy the more than 1,250 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. We got a new leader. There he is, Jeff Gordon. The DuPont Automotive Finishes Chevrolet. Just a couple laps ago, past Bill Elliott to take over the lead. And here's how it happened. He coming off the second corner, the 29 car of Steve Grissom. Moved over, let these fellas go. Elliott moves high and just lets Jeff Gordon go on. And Jeff becomes our fourth leader of the day. Now he has much fresher tires than does uh, Bill Elliott. Bill stopped some 20 laps before these others. Uh-oh, Daryl's uh, done pounded somebody in the nose. I yep, thought I saw is. that a, a few laps ago. It might be hurting his car because Michael drove by fairly easily. We'll put Daryl back to 14th. We understand that he got into the back of the 33 car a few laps ago. 33 of Robert Presley. Dale Jarrett is uh, struggling a little bit back here in 20th position. Well, he's struggling in traffic. He's been trying to get by his teammate Ernie Irvin for about 20 laps, and now Jeff Burton has called him and gone around to Jarrett. They've uh, been really going at it back there as Mark Martin goes into second around Bill Elliott. In the Fram Field summary. Wallace rejoining the competition. He's been behind the wall for 73 laps. There are 26 cars still on the lead lap with 115 laps completed. Put him a lap down. Yeah, we a pretty decent fight trying to stay in the lead lap, but it was not to be. Here's Jeff Burton trying to get past Ernie Irvin. That's for 21st position, and Dale Jarrett also joins the fight along with Gary Cope. This car seems to be just a little bit loose. I've seen it wiggle a number of times. He's holding her right down on the inside, protecting his groove. here at Bristol. He won the fall race in 1990. Here we see Earnhardt trying to get by Hustrick. We've seen Hustrick now here. Looks like he's got to move, got to run. Yeah, Hutt kind of opened the door a little bit. It was enough to give Earnhardt the position. And now here comes Jimmy Spencer right behind him. And Michael Walker's going to go by as well. And is Daryl going by? Probably. Hustrick is really wicked up high. Was not able to get by. Jimmy Spencer's car, the 23 car, looks to me like he's running pretty doggone good today. You see Hutz tripping. Here's Rusty Wallace inside of Rick Mast, and Rusty goes to fourth. Two passing one, followed by five. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> there we see. Back to this battle again is Ernie Irvin. Jeff Burton, the 99 car, earning 28, and Dale Jarrett in the 88. Now, now Burton's got to run on Ernie, going into turn three. Uh -oh. Ernie comes uh -oh. down, and yeah. they make contact. That's one way to do it, huh? <laughs> man, oh man, he's going to lose. Ernie's going to lose lots of spots now, and he's lucky he did not spin up in the corner. Yeah, he did a great job, but the leader is still up on him. He's going to put him to lap down if he's not careful. That's going out of the pits. That's scheduled pit stop for the Remington Arms. And look at Jeff Burton go by Schrader. Oh, Schrader, I forgot he's crashed. That's right. Yeah. But we're still continuing to follow this battle here between Jared and Jeff Burton. They're running 19 to 20. Battle for third now. Bill Elliott and Rusty Wallace no longer a battle as Rusty takes over that third spot. And 
Terry Labonte is coming up as well. Bill Elliott doing a great job. He's, as I mentioned before, he's been out there for a while on those tires. Bill Elliott, also a former winner here at Bristol, he won this race back in 1988. And here comes Jeff Gordon. There he's driving by his teammate, Ken Schrader, and uh, Wally Dollenbach tries to do likewise, and he does. And Mark Martin will be going by on the outside. Looks like Mark might be just a little bit faster than Jeff Gordon. He appears to me like he's gained just a little bit. We'll see how Dusty Wallace is doing to the leader. The 3.02 seconds, you see, that's the difference between Jeff Gordon and the third place car of Dusty Wallace. Kyle Petty, this is the camera aboard Kyle Petty's car, the Briggs and Stratton onboard cameras. He tries to get around Darrell Walker. Walker's car just will not stay on the bottom of the racetrack. Watch when he goes in and up the racetrack it goes. And then he comes back down the racetrack. <laughs> Ernie Irvin just won the lap there. A little skitter up the racetrack. Cost him a lot of time on the racetrack. And finally, the Kyle Penny gets by. I just said three Well, it's, it's the Coors uh, sponsor. Good job, buddy. Good job. Darrell loses another position as Ricky Craven, so that puts Darrell back to 17th now, and Robert Presley is right there to see if he can pick up a position on Darrell Waltrip. Darrell's car, the chassis, just the handle is just gone away on the Western Auto Chevrolet. Just cannot keep it on the bottom of the racetrack. If I can like see a caution right now, he doesn't want to be hard on it. Chevy. Once again, the, the totem pole on the left side of your screen is the top ten. It's a scoring pylon, not a totem pole. Oh, the scoring pylon, yes. <laughs> and the line between the 1 and the 19, that's just to distinguish between 5th and 6th. But I, have, I can't add them up all that way. I have that's trouble. right. This was done strictly for Benny's purposes because he can't keep them straight as you go down to 6, 7, and 8. Bernard picked up another spot. Goes up to ninth. Robert Presley has not yet picked off his position ahead of him. Darrell Walters trying to back on the bottom side of the racetrack. We see now he's on the bottom. It was good to see Darrell with a smile on his face again. Came into this race very optimistic with a good qualifying effort. And Jeff Hammond back in the fold. He was delighted during that, after that qualifying run on Friday afternoon. Here's more from Dr. Punch. Speaking, speaking to Jeff Hammond, D.W., and, and Jeff just talked a minute ago, and, and Jeff Hammond told me that since Darrell ran into the back of the four car trying to slow down on that caution a little while ago and got the damage on the front of the car, the car will just not stick in the corners. You see the front of the damage on the front of that car number 17? Well, when they go in the corners, D.W. said the car just skates up across the racetrack, but will not even grip the racetrack, so he's had to back out quite a bit. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. He's doing a little bit better now than he was a few laps ago. Car a little bit better, but uh, not a whole lot. And Jeff Burton and uh, the 88 car of Dale Jarrett also come up to do battle. Now, here's another battle for 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. There's a 10th place car, Bobby Labonte, Earnhardt Marlin, and Jeff Bonine up ahead. Understand that Bill Elliott may have a problem, right, John? Well, Bob, just a few laps ago, Bill radioed in and told his crew chief Mike Green that there was something wrong with the motor. They switched the ignition boxes. That didn't help, but they noticed that the temperature gauge, the engine temperature running very high. So they've got a water hose over the wall. They're waiting to see how long Bill can stay out there, hoping he can get a caution so they can bring the car in, fill the radiator back up with water. They think they might have a possible water leak. Well, Bell was leading the race after the caution because uh, he didn't uh, make a pit stop. He slid back now to 14th spot. Bill Elliott, and there he is just ahead of Hut Strickland. As a matter of fact, he just passed the car, I believe, to take over that position. So, yeah, so he pulled down low on the racetrack a little bit ago. Several cars passed him, and then he got back up into the roof. So maybe he is um, okay. 
this group is Kyle Petty in 15th. This is the Briggs and Strat camera, BB. Oh. I thought they were all Briggs and Strat. What do I know? <laughs> Look at the tack over there on the left. Does it get up to about 8,000 RPM? Yeah, 8. Maybe 81, 82. Yes, it does. There's down to 7,000. And back on the gas, it only goes, drops to about 7,000 RPM. Man, can you imagine that for no. 500 laps? It's about 6,500 down in that corner. 145 of the 500 completed right now. We've got Jeff Gordon up front with Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, and Rick Mast. There in 6 through 10. Jeff Gordon continues to lead the Food City 500, and he's trying desperately to put a lap on Robert Presley, who's running in 20th position, and I believe he finally gets the job done. He's been running behind Robert for several laps, not able to do so, but now he positions the DuPont Chevy to the inside, and Presley goes a lap down in 20th. You saw the nose of Mark March car come in the picture just a moment ago. He is in second place. There he is, and just not that far behind Jeff Gordon. He was able to, to gain some of the distance that Jeff was ahead when it took Jeff about five laps to get around Robert Preston. See Morgan Shepard in the Remington car. He was running slow a moment ago, stopped and pissed off, so now he's running okay. There's a battle for third spot, and Rusty Wallace has closed up and has almost caught Terry Labonte. Let's uh, consider him caught, won't you? <laughs> I think he's pretty much there, yeah. Rusty very optimistic going into this race. We see Ricky Rudd up in front of those cars, a lap down nine, the tie forward. Here's a Fran Field summary again. Rusty Wallace has won five times on this racetrack. Most recently in 1994, the fall race. He's won this event four times, and as we brought out before, his first win was here. Here's Jeff Burton and Hunt Strickland. And you see that Burton has just now moved into the 16th spot, 15th spot. I think Hutt's car has gotten very, very loose in the last few laps. Ricky Craven got by Hutt, Dale Jarrett got by, and he's having, he has his hands full right now. And the leader is not too far behind him, maybe a second and a half. And just about to go a lap down is Daryl Walter, who started in third position. The handling of that car has just totally gone away on him, and Jeff Gordon is pouncing on him just about to trying to put Daryl a lap down. I think Jerry Punch reported just a moment ago that the downforce has gone on the nose of the Western Auto Chevrolet from that damage we see on the hood, and I think that was a very good point, and one reason that Daryl Walter's car is just not handling as well as it did. Third and fourth, Levine and Wallace. Takes over that third spot down in turn one. Terry Labonte has not led a lap here today, but he came into this race as the leader in laps in 1996, having been at the front for 345 circuits at the five racetracks that we have competed on. And there's the interval between that group and second place, Mark Martin. How about our points leader, Dale Jarrett? He's back in 16th position behind Craven and Petty. Yeah, I said that the 19th car was in 14th a moment ago. He, in fact, is running 17th now as Jeff Burton. He made a mistake, Bob. Yeah. I'm sure it's first year. <laughs> uh, too good. 100 laps they've been since that last that pit stop. A lot of cars sliding around out there too big as a result of it. Dale Jarrett trying his best to get by Ricky Craven because they know the leader is coming up behind him. The leader, Jeff Gordon, is only about a second behind him, so they need to move on. There you see Jeff came into the picture there pretty quickly as these guys battle for 13, 14, and 15. Ricky Craven fourth in the points. By 47 over Earnhardt. Now Jarrett has an opportunity. Nope. Nope. Good make He's going to lose an opportunity. Yep. Yep. Nope. Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton back off. A while ago, Dale Jarrett was actually turning laps better than the leader of the race, but now he's mired in traffic. There is the leader, by the way, and he's not all that great a distance behind. And once again, the 
those cars that we were looking at just a moment ago. Kyle Petty, Ricky Craven, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton. They know that the leader is coming. They can see him in the rearview mirror, and also the crews are telling him. And they're all praying, please, let's have a caution flag. Please. So, won't somebody throw a beer can on the racetrack? I mean, let's have a caution flag so we can catch up, change these tires, make some adjustments. Actually, almost a sunny uh, day right now as the clouds are beginning to part just a little bit after a rain that delayed the start of this race. But things are looking pretty good right now, although there is somewhere between a 70 and a 90 percent chance of rain, they say, in this area later this afternoon. There's Gordon first. There goes Martin second. Rusty. And here comes the sixth place car, now seventh place car on Dale Earnhardt. Running sixth is Rick Mast. And it's 8.07 seconds between first and seventh. Here's John Kernan. We expect a four tire change for Bill Elliott. Remember we reported that Bill said something fairly wrong with the motor, the temperature had gone up. Well, just a few laps ago, about 10 laps ago actually, Bill said everything looks all right. The motor now feels all right. The motor completely right side, what are you going to on? It looks like a pretty good pit stop for Bill Elliott. Four tires, no chassis adjustment. Elliott rolls back out of the racetrack, and we also understand that the 43 car of Bobby Hamilton is going out to resume the battle after 133 laps in the pits. Now, Dale Jarrett has cleared Jeff Burton, so we'll see now if... Uh, cleared Ricky Craven. They, uh, Jeff Burton was right yeah. there with him, right on Jarrett's bumper. And now he's coming up on some other traffic as Earnhardt goes around Rick Mask and takes over the sixth position. And we can see that Earnhardt is closing up, building up. He was 805 in 786, and now he's back to 803. Once again, traffic as he passed Rick Mast. He lost two tenths to the leader. Traffic is very, very difficult at the Bristol International Raceway. Now Dale Jarrett has traffic ahead of him as we see Joe Nemechek move to the inside of uh, Mast. All three of those cars, Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, and Kyle Petty, wanting so much to stay in the lead lap. right now if they can get one. Kyle Petty is 13th, Jared 14th, and Jeff Burton is 15th. Here's like Dale Jared has a pretty good race car today. Kenny Schrader moves over, lets him go by. Rick Mast gives up his seventh position to come in for a pit stop. Now he's another one of those that pivoted on the caution that Bill Elliott did, so this would be a scheduled pit stop for him. Off sequence for most of the others, but it would be a scheduled stop for him. I saw a pretty serious chassis adjustment on that Hooters Pontiac. Bill Elliott has fresh tires on his car. You can see that he's moved around both uh, Jeff Gordon and Jeff Burton. Petty back in, jumped out in the end of the second corner. We see right now that Jeff Burton has got his hands full trying to keep Jeff Gordon behind him. That's let these fellows drive away a little bit. Well, now Jeff Gordon has passed Jeff Burton. So he's put him a lap down. Now there are just 13 cars, 12 cars actually, on the lead lap. And Jeff Burton dies in the pits as soon as the leader goes by. So Burton comes in as Jeff Gordon continues to lead the Food City 500. 319 laps to go back after these messages. Back at Bristol International Raceway here in Tennessee where Jeff Gordon leads the Food City 500 ESPN beginning its seventh year of Sunday Night Baseball tonight. At 9 o'clock with an exclusive opening night matchup between the White Sox and Seattle. Mariners, of course, coming off a memorable playoff, defeating the Angels in a game and then knocking off the Yankees in five. 9 o'clock tonight, baseball season opens here on ESPN. Jeff Gordon continues to lead, but Rusty Wallace has moved into second place, putting Mark Martin back to third. Now there are only 11 cars on the lead left. And the interval 
between first and second is 1.93 seconds. Jeff Burton uh, is on fresh tires in the 99. Now it's 2.04 seconds between first and second. And he just dived on the inside of Rusty Wallace. Steve Grissom also with fresh tires. And Rusty wisely backs off, lets him go. He will lose a lot of time between, him, second. between himself and the leader, but he still has a car to compete this next lap with. <laughs> That's right. It's in one piece. I understand Ward Burton is uh, they're pushing his car back out on pit road, so he's going to re-enter the race. He said during the interview after he got knocked out of the race that he would repair it and come back in. Crash over in turn one, 33 car, Robert Presley, and no caution. There's no caution. There's no caution. A lot of cars are slamming on the brakes, but no caution and no other car involved. And that's bunched up the field. Look at this. Man. There we see Elliot, Dale Jarrett, Ernie Irvin. Jarrett and others came close to getting the caution they needed, but it did not fall. And now here is Jeff Gordon to the inside of Kearney. Gordon Shepard is taking his car behind the wall. Lake Speed is back in the race. He's 168 laps down. Here's the spin. And around he goes, does a 360, doesn't hit anything. Derek Cope hits, heads to the infield trying to dodge. There's our lead of the race, Jeff Gordon. Number 24, DuPont Automotive finishes the sponsor. The 99 car and Steve Grissom both able to get by Jeff Gordon, the leader. Rusty Wallace has had enough. He's coming into the pits. Jerry Punch, he's coming toward you. Scheduled pit stop for Rusty Wallace in the Miller Genuine Draft for Thunderbird. He will, he will get four tires. DW just couldn't wait any longer. Heavy front damage on DW's car. They try to clean some debris away from the grill. DW is down in the way. Meanwhile, left side tires going up on Rusty Wallace, the five-time winner. And Rusty said, I got something for today. And he was proving it there. This is a scheduled pit stop. Let's go to Bill Weber. Ernie Irvin has been fighting a tight race car. He's gone in front of the pit road. A four-tire change. They've made a chassis adjustment. Got plenty of fuel in. The Haviland Ford on his way back to the chase. Terry Cope is on pit road for a scheduled stop as Ernie Irvin builds up speed. Now he can, after clearing the pits, there is Derry Cope. Is oh, got a trouble. trouble. Trouble on the right side. They, had to, they took the jack back around. Now they got to come back to the right side. Oh, man. Bill, can you see what's going on? Exactly as you called it, Benny. They had trouble with the right rear. Now Derek repositions the car. They're going to have to push it back into the stall before they can work on the left side tires. Meanwhile, Sterling Marlin and Terry Labonte both hit pit road. They dive around Kenny Wallace in the turn for the race. They work on the left side of the 12. He's away down pit road. Dr. Bunch. Terry Labonte's Kellogg's Sports Lake Chevrolet comes in for routine service. Heavy duty damage being done to the windshield. They're really scrubbing that windshield. Right side tires, good right side tire change. Left side jack we're under, no chassis difference for the body. Let's go to Bill Weber and the Earnhardt pit. Right side tires already on the Goodrich Chevrolet. They clean the windshield, fill it with fuel. Carry the body returns to the track. Marlin on his way. Left side tires on the three. Trouble with the left rear working on it. They got it on. Dale Earnhardt back in the race. Mark Martin coming out as Jeff Gordon comes in. Jerry, he's making his way slowly toward you. Slowly is right, Bob Jenkins, 35 miles an hour, and he has a huge hole in the front grille. Take a look at the hole in the very front grille of this new pot, Jimmy Monte Carlo. The wire screen has been punched away as they have changed right side cars. I'm not sure the crew has seen it yet. They do have a patch back here behind that wall, but they have yet to patch it. And now they wipe some of the debris away, change left side cars, he is down in the way, and Bill Dale Jarrett is with you. He 
He's got fresh right side rubber. Now they're working on the left side. The front of the quarter to care for it. A little tentative, but not too bad. Here, waits on the left rear. It's on. He's gone to the back pitch to John and Michael Walter. Four tire change for Michael Walter. No chassis adjustment. They get the one nuts tied. A full tire change. Jeff O'Dine also in for four tires, as was Kyle Petty. Let's go to Jerry Bobby Bobani's pit. Right side tire for the Interstate Battery Chevy Monte Carlo. Jimmy Maycar crew scramble around. Great change of right side tires. One can of fuel in, second can going in. Now trouble with the left front. The air gun. Chris Kelly can pick it back up, and Bobby is down and away. A flurry of pit stop activity. Labonte picked up the lead there for a oh, lot of contacts. Jeff Gordon and Michael Walter almost coming off turn four. Michael had come out of the pits a few laps. About the time Gordon and Dale Jerry came out of the pits. You see Dale Jerry behind Michael Walter, so right now Jeff Gordon would have Dale Jerry to lap down. That's exactly right, Denny. In fact, he's got uh, he's gonna be, there's only gonna be about six or seven cars on the lead lap. Now let's go to the pits, cover Sterling Marlin's pit. Sterling Marlin has returned to pit road. They're working on the right side. They must have had a bad right side tire. He got two new tires, went back in. Big, big, costly move for the four bunch. So Man. the leader is Ricky Rudd, is that correct? Yep. You are scoring I think that's right. He has not made a pit stop yet. Rusty second and Labonte is third. Look at Gordon's speed before and after the pit stop. Yeah, it picks up about eight miles an hour. Almost seven and a half miles an hour. Now you understand, folks, why these guys will run ten laps of caution play, come out, they dive in upon four new tires. Because new tires are just so much faster than a used tire. Ricky Rudd stretching it as far as he can. He has the lead of this race at the moment, but needs a pit stop. Rusty Wallace second. Then Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin fourth, and Dale Earnhardt is fifth at Bristol. Back in Bristol, Tennessee, Ricky Rudd was our leader when we went to commercial. He is now on pit lock for his schedule stuff. He has a lap down as he was passed by Rusty Wallace that came down pit road. Rusty became the leader. That's not tire is not going on the tie for Thunderbird. Ricky Rudd currently third in the point damage, and he will go down two laps as he is down and away and headed back to turn one. Rudd trying to continue the string. He's the only driver to finish in the top 10 in all five previous races in 1996. So the lead goes back now to Rusty Wallace with Jeff Gordon second, Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, and Terry Labonte. There's Rusty. He got out ahead of uh, Jeff Gordon, and so is the leader. So that means their hats off to the Miller Genuine Draft Pit Group for a job well done. Picked up a couple of seconds, and that was the difference between being first as he is right now and being behind the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. Gordon trying to go to the inside of Hud Strickland. He's running ninth, the lap down. There are eight cars on the lead lap. Here's third place, Mark Martin, the pole sitter, eligible for $121,600 in unit count bonus money. And looking for Dale Earnhardt, there he is, fourth place car. Now we'll look for the fifth place car, which happens to be car number five, driven by Terry Labonte. Brother Bobby Labonte, as you can see from our scoring pile on, is in sixth spot. Rick Mast is seventh. Dick Trickle in eighth. Michael Walker ninth. And Hutch Trickle in tenth. And there's a two second separation between Rusty and Jeff, first and second. There's the 18 car. Sixth place car at this time of the race, the Interstate Batteries Chevrolet. At his best finish in 1996 at Darlington last week, where he came in runner-up after some uh, last lap scrambling because of fuel. Ricky Rudd and 
Bill Elliott just made contact up in turn four. No big harm done, excepting Elliott got past. I would imagine that as long as this car continues to perform as well as it has for Rick Mass, that he no longer has the flu. Is that correct? No, he still got the flu, but uh, he didn't act like it. It makes it, makes it better, doesn't it? Yeah. Makes you feel better. Here's John Kernan with more on that. Yeah, I was talking with Rick this morning. He said he felt much better today than he did yesterday. He said that he would get the car and drive for as long as he could. And whenever he felt that he couldn't give the car a good ride, then he'd pull in, get out, and let David Green. Well, Richard Jackson just told me, he said, yeah, the car's not exactly perfect the way Rick would like to have it, but it's good enough to where Rick is enjoying himself despite the fact that he feels pretty sick still. Doing a great job. Well, Dick Trickle just went a lap down, so there are now seven cars that are on the lead lap. And the next one to go a lap down would be Rick Mast. And I'm sure that Lloyd Allen, sitting back in Raleigh, North Carolina, watching this race, would love to be in that 19 car. It's patience, Lloyd. Patience. Just like these drivers are doing today, it'll, it'll be there. Oh, yeah. He'll be back. Jeff Gordon led 205 laps of this 500 lapper in winning last year. He has led over 100 of the first 234 in this one. But right now, Rusty Wallace is the man out front. Dale Jarrett is a lap down, but uh, Ned, he's right now as he's, fast as Rusty Wallace. He's, he's faster, Benny. He's actually gaining on Rusty right now. He passed Jeff Gordon about 10 laps ago and has uh, pulled away five car lengths from, from Jeff. Now he's got Dick Prickle to race for position there. Prickle is in eighth place and Jarrett is in uh, ninth place. Both of them are left down. Dale Jarrett started dead last and has worked his way up to ninth spot. And without the benefit of a lot of caution factors, there has been a couple, but we've been racing now for quite some time without a caution flag. So, yeah, we've run. Uh, Almost 200 laps, about 180 some laps since we had a car. We're real close to the halfway point of this race. And uh, there is a trickle going up the banking, and both uh, Jared and Gordon able to sneak by underneath. Now that allowed Rusty to pull away a little bit. Jared closed it down to within a second, but now Rusty has been able to pull away a little bit to one and a half seconds. Rusty is without doubt the king of the short tracks. Well, he has a fabulous record on the short tracks. Trying that to grab it. That you said at the top of the show is average finish is three or something? Yeah. Over how many races? Like 28 or 27 or 28 races? 25, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Third place average finish in the last 25 short track races. Wow. Earnhardt, nine. Amazing. Those guys are in the top five right now, so uh, this is a typical short track race, huh? <laughs> Rusty Wallace leads with Jeff Gordon running second. We'll take another break and be right back with more of the Food City 500. We are three laps from the halfway point, and Rusty Wallace is the leader of the Food City 500. There are six cars on the lead lap. Jeff Gordon running second, then Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, and Bobby Labonte. Now look at Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace's laps here, laps 242 through 246. 1.6 second interval on lap 242, and 8 tenths of a second on 246. Rusty Wallace comes off the corner. There is one more lap to halfway. And information, of course, at an AutoZone on-track interval. And we're looking for the crossed flags in the Katy. We have reached the halfway point of this race, and there they are. No, they won. Well, yeah, 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 it's a little bit late. Didn't, the leader didn't get it, but everybody else did. Yeah. yeah, they missed it. We are at 250, and it is now a situation where we won't come back tomorrow if it does rain, and I don't think there's really rain that close to us. One reason why everybody wants to get this race in today, in addition to, of course, the spectators that have turned out here, Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt and several of the NASCAR officials are headed for Japan tomorrow. 8 o'clock in the morning, they jump on an airplane and go to...
to Japan for a tire test for the race that's coming in Suzuka. Yep. I guess, you know, it's awfully tiring physically at this racetrack and mentally, so it give them guys a chance to rest while they take it. That's a long ride, isn't it? Man, it is. It's about a 12, 14 hour flight over there. So Rusty Wallace will pick up the $10,000 Gatorade money for the leading at the halfway point. That's pretty good. 10000 bucks. Wow. That's just pocket change for somebody like you, BP, huh? Yeah, well, I thought you were going to say Rusty. It might be pocket change for Rusty, but that's a lot of money. It's only about 3000 my career, but I won that much by winning a race. That's right. See Kyle Petty just got around the 99 car and put Kyle in 14th position. He is a lap down, however. He's trying his best to get by Jeff Bodine in the QBC card. Kyle Petty, another car, started way in the back. Had to take the provisional. Started 34th. So he's uh, doing rather well here up in 14th. Kyle having one of his best runs of the year. I guess we heard our camera when he ran into that tire on Steve Grissom's car. I haven't seen him anywhere. <laughs> it's got a mark on it or an ad one. like he's on the inside of no didn't quite make it that is once again the battle for position the 14th position as a matter of fact and there we see the five car of terry labani who's currently running fifth and driven up behind these cars and trying to get by them might be a lot easier said than done well, that's a, a lot of cars there that are running a, a pretty good clip around here and of course they're battling four positions so they called Jimmy Spencer who is in 13th spot until Ted Ellis Musk just went two laps down Ted Musgrave now three laps down in the 16 family channel forms There, didn't he? Sure did. Time to put that yeah, on. on the inside, I think. Well, well, yeah. Just couldn't get the traction off the corner. He, he had him, but he just couldn't get the traction he needed. Well, between first and fourth is 6.3 seconds. You can see there on the scoring pylon. Rusty Wallace and Dale are hard and forth. Finish this year was 11th at Rockingham, now running 14th, and still just right behind Jeff Bodine, but can't find the opportunity to pass. Let's see how much time there is down the each straightaway here at the Bristol Race. When you see his rear lap just a moment ago, when we get to the front stretch, we'll try to count and see how much time the drivers have to relax. Let's see. 1,001, 1,000, almost, yeah. uh, almost two seconds. Almost two seconds were able to relax out of 16 seconds it takes to get around the racetrack. Car on the bottom. Like I said, slow car on the bottom. It's a 43 car. Now, so that's not a slow car, that's dead. Clear. Clear. Now run 200 laps under green. And really, Betty, that's the least of the physical problems created by this racetrack because when you go into that banking, your head, I imagine, weighs like a ton, doesn't it? I don't know how many G's that you pull going in the corner, but it is considerable. And whatever it is, if your head weighs 16 pounds and you pull five G's, then I guess it's weighing 50 or 60 pounds. Plus, you got so much centrifugal force here, too. You're not only pushing down on your body, but you're pushing sideways on it, too. It's tough. There's Jeff Gordon, who's running in second spot. And there is the interval between first and second. Like that, Jeff is closing the gap. Yeah, he is. He, he passed Dale Jarrett now and he's pulled away from him. We'll take another break. Stand by for more from Bristol, Tennessee. Welcome back to Bristol. The Fruit City 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race. 274 laps completed now, and the leader is Rusty Wallace. We're watching from the roof cam of 
Kenny Schrader, who got knocked around like a hockey puck earlier in the race. And speaking of hockey, do you like that transition? Oh, I want to segue. I'm uh, Tuesday night at 7.30, the last two Stanley Cup champions face off for the fourth time this season. Messier and the Rangers and Martin Brodeur and the Devils go at it at 7.30 on ESPN Tuesday night. And you're a wrestling fan, a hockey fan. What sport don't you like, Ben Jenkins? Well, there's very few that I don't like. Racing's at the top, but uh, it's close between those two you just mentioned. Bobby Labonte, you see him up in front of Rusty Wallace there, about to go a lap down. Labonte is running in the sixth position. Man, look at Rusty steering that thing yeah. as he comes off the corner. Fighting her a little. Yeah, they've been, been out there a while on those tires now. They're beginning to slip around a little bit. He's led 57 laps, started 11th, currently first. He's been as low as 15th. That came on lap 205. And we can see that Jeff Gordon is only 1.17, seconds behind the leader, Rusty Wallace. And Rusty has heavy, heavy traffic in front of him. Not only Bobby Labonte, he has Ricky Craven up there, Joe Nemechek, a long list of cars. About a third of the field is directly in front of Rusty Wallace. Here's John Kernan on the backstretch pit. This is an unscheduled pit for Jeff Burton. It'll be right side tires and then swing around the left side. Jeff Green go in a couple of laps ago. Then he felt like he had a tire going down. So rather than stay out there, possibly have one go flat sticking in the wall, they come in and sit a little extra time on the left rear tire. But Jeff Burton's down and away. to 35 miles an hour till he clears the pits and then stands on the gas. And we can see that Jeff Gordon has almost caused Rusty Wallace because Rusty, again, is just mired in heavy traffic. He was able to get by Bobby Labonte. But now he's got Ricky Craven and Steve Grissom ahead of him as Gordon continues to close in. Ricky Craven is one lap down in 16th position. There is Dale Earnhardt, and he also is on the move. He's in third. About 10 laps ago, he moved around Mark Martin and took over third position. Let's see how far from that Earnhardt's going to have to go to catch the lead of the race. Rusty Wallace. About four and a half seconds, Danny, but you can. It's about uh, straight away. Now look at this. The interval between first and third. Wallace and Earnhardt on five consecutive laps. That interval closed down. And now we're on the track. And we'll report from 5.6 seconds to 4.8. will start tracking it on the pylon and it's down to 4.1. Well, Rusty Wallace once again just in heavy traffic. And now only about a car length and a half separate first and second as Jeff drives right up on the back bumper now. The 41 car Ricky Craven is one lap down. He desperately wants to stay in front of the leader, leader if he can. He's in 16th position. Looks inside at the end of the backstretch. He's going to be able to pass him now. We'll see if Jeff comes along. Sure he will. Yep. Now here's Steve Grissom. And oh, right in front of Jeff Gordon. He tried to Man. maybe get out of the way and almost lost it. Now Rusty Wallace has Ted Musgrave and Jimmy Spencer up ahead. Musgrave is three laps down in 24th position. Spencer is uh, just one lap down in 15th position. Musgrave just pulled aside and let uh, both Rusty and Jeff pass by. Once again, we're checking the interval between Rusty Wallace, the leader of the race, the two car, and Dale Earnhardt, third place car, number three. And now we see Earnhardt is in some traffic. He was held up by Ken Schrader just a little bit. He's now over four seconds behind the leader. So again, it all depends on traffic, where you catch traffic and how much you have to uh, put up with traffic while you're trying to move to the front. Rusty goes around Jimmy Spencer. That puts him two laps down. The 
next car that's uh, one lap down and about to go to is Jeff Bodine, and he is right in front of Rusty Wallace. Field summary as we have completed almost 300 laps coming up on the 300 lap mark 293 in the books. Boy, well, Jeff Gordon is just waiting. He's there, hoping Rusty will slip. Jeff Gordon's driving a smooth, smart race. He has a good race car, and he's backing off when, when things get a little jumpy in front of him. Backs off. Up ahead of Rusty, Jeff Bodine is having his problems with Robert Preston. Here's the lead. Jeff Gordon on the inside. Rusty just moves over. Says, okay, go ahead. You go up there and fight those guys for a while. And Robert Presley is going three laps down. Robert back in 21st position. Dale Jarrett passes Bobby Labonte for sixth place. See what Jeff Gordon can do with Jeff Bodine. So far, nothing. <laughs> well, Jeff's keeping him at bay at the moment. And so it is Jeff Gordon who has gone back into the lead. The Wood City 500, Rusty Wallace back to second. Back with more after these messages. Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, Jerry Punch, Bill Weber, and John Kernan back at Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee for the Food City 500 that's being led at the moment by the DuPont Chevy, number 24 of Jeff Gordon. Running second is the number two Miller Ford, driven by Rusty Wallace. Now we have a pretty good battle shooting up for third place between Dale Earnhardt in number three up ahead and Mark Martin with the roof cam. Well, Earnhardt's got caught up in all of that traffic that we saw the leaders go through about 10, 12 laps ago. And uh, it has slowed him some. Very trying to move on the inside of Robert Presley. Bryce Presley's found him a groove on the outside there that's been running pretty good for him, but Earnhardt does get by him. Now Mark Martin cuts down in front of Mark. Mark comes up there now. Whoa. Big touch. <laughs> coming off yeah. the straightaway. We've had caution flags, what, a couple of caution flags, and still our average speed is a record. Yep, and the record is held by Charlie Glotz back at 101.074. And we're above that. We're looking for the five car, the fifth place, Terry Labonte. Oh, there he is. Cool. I'm all around the leader. Just ahead of the leader. That's not good. Michael Walker just went two laps down. Michael is running 10th in the uh, Wood Brothers set go forward. There we see him. Looks like he's got a little, somebody put, when he was parked, somebody put a little note on there. for a parking him. ticket, yeah. yeah. Or a speeding ticket, one of the two. Hey, here's the petty cam back. Yeah. This is a battle for position, by the way, between Waltrip in 21 and Kyle Petty. On whose car we are running. This is the battle for 10th. Michael is 10th and Kyle is 11th. Both of them now, unfortunately, two laps down. You can see 188 laps to go, so can they make it on one more stop, Ned? I don't know. I don't think so, Benny. They stopped, uh, that leader stopped at about 100, and, well, Ricky Rudd didn't stop till like 219, but the, but the, other leaders stopped at like 206, 208 when Jeff Gordon stopped. Rusty Wallace stopped at 201. So Rusty's been out there 113 laps. Right Ooh, now. We're not seeing some very good news here on uh, Martin's roof cam. It's a little moisture, huh? A little bit of rain. Boy, they're having enough trouble slipping and sliding around out there <laughs> as it is. <laughs> they don't need any rain. There we can see just a few drops. Let's clear the lens and just see how quickly it accumulates here. It's not bad. Bobby Devonnie moves over. Let's Mark Martin go by. 
skies really don't look all that bad. The clouds seem to be broken, so I don't think it's a situation where it's going to start raining and rain for a Bob Crate. You wasn't born in the mountains, were you? It's going to be raining in five minutes. <laughs> It's raining right now, but so part that's no part of prediction. We come across that hill there. <laughs> There's a shower. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jerry, what do you say about it? Help me. Well, the bad news is I want to echo the fact that it is starting to rain a little bit now. We're getting some getting some rain drops on some of the windows. Just talked to Ray Everdale a moment ago. They expect to pit around lap 350 to 360, and that should be their final scheduled pit stop, of course, with the rain starting to come down. You see Ray now motioning to some of the officials in his car is jumping around on the racetrack, and that Jeff Gordon is complaining the car is getting loose out there, so now Ray is beginning to complain a little bit to the NASCAR official. And yellow, no, they're, they're calling for one. Yellow flare is. is coming out right yeah. now. Caution out because of rain. But I don't believe the leader took the caution, so now he has to try to race back and keep Bill Elliott. Ooh. Oh, Elliott spins. He was jumped by Jeff Burton. Yes, he was, indeed. As they came around, he might not have got into the wall too hard. Here comes Elliott with some uh, damage on the nose. Yep. The nose of the car did get into the wall. And this is for rain that goes over in turn three. I can see the rain. Mark, can you see the rain coming? Yeah, out? I can see it now. Yeah. Well, we ought to be going. too happy. He's pulling up there to the 99 car. Yeah, he's watch. not too happy. He's going to have a few words and just a little Point friendly. Finger at him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just want to tell uh, Mr. Burton that he was not a happy camper. Right. Here's the replay from Michael Waltrip's roof cam. There you see. Yep. They, they contact that Burton down on the inside. Michael almost got into Burton, but Burton backed off. And so the pace car comes out, slowing the pace because it is raining. Raining pretty good right now. Track's getting wet. We'll come right back. Brought to you by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. The Boy Scouts motto is be prepared. That's also a Whistling Club crew member's motto when it comes to coming to the short track, particularly here at Bristol, Tennessee. How appropriate that our Quaker State track pack is on being prepared for anything that happens on a short track. Now, you've seen these before. These are called war wagons or pit carts. They have a number of different names. Basically, a cart on wheels with all kinds of different drawers. You can open up and see in here. They've got stopwatches, all kinds of screwdrivers, etc. This is the Kellogg's one. How about a carburetor? What's my bid for a Terry Levante carburetor? Pretty neat little deal here. Everything you would want to have there. But take a look over here. This is the mother of all pit carts. This huge mama right here has everything high tech inside. The scoring computer. Scoring monitor here if you want to basically come in here and calculate your fuel mileage. Take a look down here. Here's a, a monitor so they can watch the race, watch our ESPN feed on down below here. You can see this is the RCA satellite hookup. They can actually put tapes in here and replay their pit stops. And down here, a digital scale if you want to measure and calculate fuel mileage. And one other thing I might want to tell you, if during the flag or during the race a driver gets a little bit uh, of the hungries, they've got your caution flag size box of corn flakes and if someone in our booth I won't mention any names gets hungry they also have a whole big box Benny of pop tarts <laughs> you wasn't going to mention any names <laughs> all right let's take a look at the Napa field summary as you see Terry Labonte on yep. pit road and the other crew members coming out to keep their pit areas dry and the red flag is out I'm wondering about this if he's going to be able to complete that pit stop or what the situation will be maybe he came in before the red flag came out I don't know you can't work on the car during the red. The red is showing with five cars on the lead lap and 324 of the 500 laps completed. Labonte pulls out of his uh, pit area and will now go over to the line of cars that are stopped over on the back stretch. I tell you what, that is great strategy. Well, yeah, if he got in and uh, apparently there was no penalty involved, so it was great strategy. He'll be the leader of the race. So everybody else is going to stop if we get this race restarted. He had nothing to lose. He was the last car on the lead lap. And, and so, I, it looks to me like from where the rain came from, it's clear back there, and I, I believe we will restart this race. And Terry Labonte 
could in fact be the leader. Good strategy by Gary Dehart. Jerry? Gary, that was a very, very slick move on your part coming in and making a quick pit stop before the red came out. Well, actually, we decided to make a pit stop and do two tires. Excuse me. Do two tires and then try to make up some. I was afraid we might. The pace car would catch us, so we was going to do two tires and come back in and do two more. But uh, when we come on pit road, they red flagged it. So while, while we were in, we might as well do four tires. I saw the NASCAR official talking to you. We were wondering whether the red flag was going to come out. They were going to let you complete the pit stop, but you guys were sort of sort of negotiating down here. Well, the, the, uh, you know, we, like I said, we didn't know it was a red flag till it was on pit road, and we'd already committed, so I don't think you're going to do anything about it. All right, they have two fresh tires. Gary Dehart making the call. They would like to be able to come back in and get two more, but they got two more fresh tires than anyone else out there, so pretty good move on the Kellogg's team's part, Bob. And the tarps coming out on the back stretch as the shower is passing over the racetrack. Not a hard shower by any means. We'll undoubtedly be able to get this race going again. City 500 being brought to you by Western Auto. Western Auto and Western Auto's Parts of America are the official auto parts store of NASCAR. By Chevrolet. One car company has won more races in the history of NASCAR. Genuine Chevrolet. And by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. We are red. We are under a stoppage because of a rain shower. It isn't raining very hard right now. The jet dryer is already out there. And this is a great time to go to NASCAR online. Just walk over to your computer and punch up www.nascar.com. And boy, you can get a variety of things from there, including information from the garage area and scoring. You can even send email directly to the NASCAR officials to tell them what's on your mind. Well, they won't be able to listen to you and I, though, on that. Well, that's true, too. And that is very unfortunate. Let us check the radar. Who's down there? Bill Weber? We, I'm glad to see you with the radar rather than uh, Kernan. He was never any good. Thank you, Bob. Sure. About the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> here uh, Could be the last. Know, I, I had just checked this before it started raining, and this shower here was actually moving north of the speedway. This is Bristol International Raceway right here. And as you can see, there's just one little green cell right over the speedway. Unfortunately, this is the 50 nautical mile range here. You can see there's some real nasty stuff moving this way. It's just outside 50 miles. So once this storm moves off to the northeast, which has been the general direction, we'll get our window back. We'll be able to get the track dry and hopefully get to the conclusion before the real nasty stuff uh, gets in here later on this afternoon. So we've got our fingers crossed, and John's got Terry Lavani, who's got the uh, slick move of the race at this point. Looks like about the slick move, and uh, Terry, what a great call you guys made. <laughs> Well, we didn't have anything to lose, and, uh, you know, we didn't know that they were fixing a red flag. It. We just figured when it went, went back to green, we would already have our new tires and full of fuel, so we'd come out the leader. So uh, it turned out to uh, work to our advantage so far. What, what were you asking me just before they threw it down to us? Was that anything important? No. No, nothing important. <laughs> so, hey, tell me, who, who else, who out there looked uh, really strong? Well, Jeff's running awful good, and the two cars running good. Uh, so I don't know. It's, uh, I think the... the first three or four cars are pretty good. Does it look like there's enough rain to, to mess up the track, you know, to wash away the rubber? It, it's not been really he that heavy, has it? It hadn't rained enough to make much difference, I, think. I don't think. All right, well, Terry Labonte is sitting down here. He's waiting, anxious to get back in the car. Let's go to uh, Bill Weber, who's with Richard Childress. And he was just talking to his driver. Uh, one or two you had in the field. You lost one early, but that three car is coming through the pack. Yeah, you know, our car's running real well. You know, Dale's being real cautious in the traffic and doing a super job. And uh, you know, looks like a 24 might be a little better than we are right now, but we're going to make an adjustment, and I'm sure they will, and kind of depends on what this rain does. What's that adjustment going to be? Come on, you can just, just me and you, Richard. Uh, we'll guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you had a second car in the field. He qualified real well. Uh, unfortunately, got uh, out of the, was knocked out of the race early, but is that a peek into the future, Richard? Well, we don't know yet. You know, we're just looking at it. You know, we just, we don't really know, being honest. You know, Mike does a good job, that whole team. You know, today they got a little mixed up on her pits there on that stop and uh, so they'll be good next time when he come back yeah you got any uh, travel plans in the near future you going to japan yeah we're leaving for japan tomorrow to uh, go over our entire test so uh, 
it'll be uh, we'll do that and see how it goes there. We're not we're about to get run over here by a, a black Chevrolet van in fact but uh, how exciting is that for you Richard the opportunity to go over uh, there to go over there and to see the, the people in Japan how they accept our sport and uh, NASCAR racing and you know international like that I think it's great to carry our sport over there I think it gives us international exposure if we only do it once a year and uh, I think it's a pretty good move you got an extra seat on the plane Oh, yeah, it's a big one. It's 747. Okay, well, if you know, if you see him leaving the track and me with him, then uh, I'll see you at North Wilkesboro. <laughs> Jerry Punch is standing by with Bill Elliott. Well, Bill, Bill is not one of the cars that got the stop on pit road during the red flag. Actually, he's back behind the pit wall as they're working on the car. And, Bill, after starting back in the very back of the field, you had made a pretty good run of it until just a couple of laps ago. Well, we ran well. You know, we led there for a while. And then... The, the car got to running bad and I couldn't figure it out. And then it just got about, it almost quit. And then it just got started running back a little bit at a time. Like it's like it progressively got worse and then it progressively got better. And now I don't know if it had water in the fuel or what. When that incident happened a few laps ago, you pulled up and uh, I guess uh, had a couple of questions for a young driver. Was the track just getting that wet out there or did you think that someone just made a mistake? He claimed he was trying to get his lap back and just run all over him again in turn, one, in turn three down there. And I mean, you know, there's a lot of things you can do, but, you know, when it's raining like that and the racetrack gets kind of questionable and, and stuff like that, I mean, we all make mistakes, but golly, I was trying to mind my own business, you know. Just minding my own business, the veteran with lots of experience on the short track. And there's Mike Beam and the crew. Now, Bill, how bad is the car hurt? Well, it, the worst part is it knocked the radiator back and it... it, it uh, from what I understand, the uh, radiator hose got into the oil pump and it busted the water line. And, you know, there, it's just one of them days that you know, we're just going to have to try to assess the damage, get it done as quickly as we can, and go out and run the rest of the day. Sort of a helpless feeling here. The NASCAR official is standing here. Corky, they'll show the NASCAR official that they are not allowed to work on the race car under a red flag situation. So Mike Beam and those guys can look and think and decide and but you wonder why they're not working, folks. Not because the McDonald's crew doesn't want to work. They'd like to be able to fix this Big Mac and get it back out there. But right now, with the red flag showing, they can't touch it. There's Mike just saying, oh, I wish this red flag period <laughs> would oh, end so shot. I can start working what on this shot. car. <laughs> All right, we'll take another break. Jeff Gordon leaves, but we are under a rain delay. Track drying underway here at Bristol International Raceway and Tennessee. We will go now to Bill Weber, who's with the current leader of this race, Jeff Gordon. And he's having another fabulous run. He's talking to some of his crew guys. Going to put on a cap so we can see that DuPont is his sponsor. Oops, it's not the right size. Hey, a great run for you. I remember how excited you were when you won here a year ago. You're having a great run today. The car is really good. Uh, you know, Ray and these guys have done a great job of setting it up and you know, I didn't really know uh, what we were going to have in store for us, but it seems like on the long runs we're, we're really good. And, you know, that's that's nice when you run as many green flag laps as we've been running. Uh, Rusty was pretty good. Uh, you know, he had a, a good stop. He kind of short stop, stopped there on us, but uh, he's real good on new tires. So it takes us a while, but uh, after a while the car gets real comfortable to me. And it's hard to get comfortable at this place as fast as we're going. It seems like these laps are clicking by so fast, but I'm, I'm having a lot of fun out there. How about the traffic, Jeff? It's amazing to watch from the sidelines. I can't imagine what it's like to go through it and around it. The traffic, as always uh, here at Bristol, is unbelievable. Uh, you know, you got to be real careful, but at the same time, you know, if you wait too long, these guys are going to run you down. That advantage that you got is going to be gone. So, you know, I've been, been trying to pick my way through there. I've been pretty fortunate so far. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I got a few donuts over there on the side from some lap cars, but, uh, you know, you got to understand their point, too. I mean, they're trying not to go lap down. They're going to fight just like I would if I was going to lap down, but uh, I got to fight, too, because I'm leading the race. You want it to keep raining? It doesn't matter. As good as this car's driving, you know, I'll go back out there, but, uh, you know, if it wants to rain, then it wants to rain. But, uh, you know, like these fans here, we want to we wanna race our way to the checker flag. Okay, same with the fans at home. Good luck when we get restarted. Jeff Gordon, the current leader. Now to another man that knows a lot about Bristol with Jerry Punch, Darrell Walter. Indeed, no one knows more about traffic at this racetrack than Darrell Walter. Darrell, after a great qualifying effort, and the car ran good early on. We yeah. talked about the fact that you got a little bump up there in the front end, and now the car is skating. What actually happened? Well, Doc, my parts of America Chevrolet is pushing a little bit on me right now. I, 
got that big hole right up there in the front and uh I was pretty good on that after they adjusted the car a little bit. Maybe we get in here again under this caution, work on a little bit more. But I just lost all that time uh, with the car sliding the front. It's not pushing. It's just sliding the nose. I don't have any downforce. And uh, you can ask Rusty Wallace about that. He'll tell you right quick, you can't race without downforce. Oh, a little, little plug at the Ford drivers. Now, you, you can't turn the car and get underneath someone in the corners here? Well, when I get under them, I'm under them good, but I can't get back in the gas because the nose takes off. So I have to be real, real careful. New tires certainly helps, but uh, those long runs, by the end, of the, the tires get worn down a little bit and the thing starts pushing real bad and I have to just back up. But uh, this rain didn't hurt anything. We got a chance to look at it and actually we're uh, feel worse than we did or better than we did because uh, it's a lot worse than we thought it was. Now you're alluding to the fact that so there's been some disagreement over what these cars actually do in the wind tunnel. What have you heard as far as the wind tunnel testing in NASCAR did? Have there been any specifics come out? Uh, you know, the best I can tell, they're pretty equal. Uh, I know Jeff Gordon has, you know, he won Richmond, but that's because he had the first pit. And uh, Dale Jarrett would have won Darlington last week if he hadn't had trouble there at the end. And, of course, today, the short tracks, it's a little more forgiving, aerodynamics are. You can work chassis and shocks here and, and help yourselves a lot. So uh, I, I believe, in all honesty, they're very, very equal. Uh, people that say, well, the performance doesn't show it, but I think the teams that have the Chevrolets are on top of their game. And the guys with the Fords have got to adjust to the new concessions they've had, and I think they'll be better before the year's over with. Thanks, T.W., for taking a moment with us. My pleasure, sir. Come by any time. <laughs> <laughs> Darrell Walter for 12-time winner at Bristol. I think, think John Kernan has caught up with a driver who's been ailing, John. Yeah, Rick Mast has uh, climbed into the back of his hauler, the uh, most comfortable seat around. Rick, first of all, how are you feeling? You going to be able to finish this thing? They go back right now, no. <laughs> you know, we got something come on us last night on what it was. Johnny and Ann, hi, guys. They took care of us last night, and uh, the car was running pretty good. You know, we kind of got it off the last stop we made. We made some adjustments, and we really got it screwed up. You know, I lost another lap. I shouldn't have done that, but uh, uh, David Green is gracious enough to – he's been standing by all day for me, so – uh, I think if he can get the mess clean out of the seat and the floorboard, I think he, he can finish the race up for us and be all right. All right, you guys did make a pit stop, uh, ran out of gas too, right? Just before you came in, before the red flag came out? Yeah, I think we we're 10th or 11th, and uh, we was running around there slow, you know, that we lost fuel pressure and had to come in and get gas, and that put us to back like 19th or 20th or something. I think we can get back up through there, and uh, I'm sure David would do a good job. All right, well, that Rick Mass not feeling great, but I'm sure uh, with the weekend off next week, he'll feel better whenever we roll into North Wilkesboro. Yeah, the uh, fuel problem dropped Rick back to 19th position. The track is drying very, very quickly, and there's no rain falling right now, so we should be back to racing before too very long. We've completed 325 of 500. The drivers have been ordered to their cars once again, although we have been under a red flag situation here recently. The track is dry and we'll be going back to racing in just a few moments. This is the first time that we have visited Bristol under its new ownership. Larry Carrier sold the track earlier this year to Bruton Smith. And uh, this great half mile facility here in the mountains of Tennessee is being added to the collection of racetracks that Bruton Smith now owns. He, we were in Atlanta just a few weeks ago, and of course he uh, is also in control of the Charlotte Motor Speedway, but there are other racetracks on the horizon. As a matter of fact, a big super speedway is being built down in the southwestern part of the United States. The new one and a half mile oval is alongside Interstate 35 near Fort Worth. Workers have been there since last year on the 950 acres, which is quickly becoming a major motorsports facility. It'll be the second largest in America with more than 150,000 seats and 205 Skybox executive suites. This is where Victory Lane is being built. One of the drivers who hopes to be there someday is Dale Earnhardt, who climbed aboard a bulldozer to help move some dirt. It's just one of many racetracks being built in the U.S., an example of the racing frenzy that's sweeping the country. Going to be a magnificent facility down there in Texas, BP. Bruton told me last week down in Darlington that pretty soon they're going to have 700 people working there on that racetrack, getting it ready. Yep, should be fun. Well, we have a special guest with us in the booth, and we'll uh, let Ned Jarrett uh, tell us all about that. Yes, we do, Bob. Lee Greenwood, recording artist. Uh, what are you doing here, Lee? Well, I don't have quite 700 people building my new theater, but I'm up here <laughs> singing the National Anthem today and singing God Bless the USA. Uh, I'm in the neighborhood now. I've moved to Sevierville, Tennessee, about eight miles from Dollywood. We open the Lee Greenwood Theater tomorrow night with mm -hmm. our celebrity opening and shows from now on. This is my new home. 
Well, Sounds that's good. exciting. I'll be singing for you here and, and some of the other racetracks in the southeast as well. We we'll look forward to that. Are you a race fan? Yes, yes. <coughs> yeah, I can tell with that jacket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sterling Marlin. Come on, Kodak! <laughs> <laughs> had pleasure playing uh, some golf with Lee a couple of years ago in a charity tournament over at Nashville, Tennessee. And, Here's uh, an exaggeration. <laughs> Me <laughs> well, yeah. golf? Are you kidding? Yeah, we had a lot of fun at it. Chase the white ball around. You play golf, I don't play golf. Well, it was a lot of fun, and we appreciate you coming by, and, uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you around the races a lot more. I'll be around a lot. Good. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Lee Greenwood joining us here in the booth while we're waiting for the track to completely dry. And it is dry enough that the drivers are back in their cars and the crews have taken the tarps off. And we should be back to racing here in just a few moments. We had a delay at the beginning because of rain and now one here at 325 laps. But every indication is we'll be able to get this one completed. Awaiting the resumption of the Food City 500 under a rain delay at the moment. A reminder that coming up right after our coverage, the men's final of the Lipton Championship featuring Agassi and Ivanisevic. And then Sports Center coming up at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. After that, the big basketball game, the Women's Basketball Championship at 6.30. Sunday night baseball at 9 o'clock tonight. You know, I wonder... Uh, in Sweden, is the weather kind of like this? Never been there. How would I know? Somewhere back there, there are 10 oh. fans from Sweden yeah. that came here from Sweden just to watch this stock car. Sports come a long way. It has come a long ways. So I wonder if they're getting wet back there. What if they know to bring a raincoat and all those... <laughs> I guess they figured it out. I imagine they're probably more used to snow up in that area of the world, don't you? I was supposed that, and uh, they said that I asked how the weather was. They said it's about similar to Newfoundland. Oh, well, that tells you a lot. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Doc, Jerry Punch, what do you think? Help us. Maybe I can give you a medical opinion on this. Uh, irrespective of what country they're from, when it rains here, they are going to get wet. Hmm. There you go, Clever. Betty. Oh, Doc, well. <laughs> We're, we're glad we bring you to these races, Doc, for bits of uh, information. And <laughs> All right, let's go to Bill Weber. He's with Todd Parrott. Well, you guys have really had a, a rough ride this weekend. You had a great qualifying run, then your car went into the wall. You've had to rebuild one, and you're having a great run today off the lead lap, but you still got a good shot. Yeah, I mean, this, this is Bristol, and a lot can still happen, you know. And got 170-something laps to go, and... We are running six, one lap down. Hopefully we get up front. We'll make a couple adjustments this next stop and make it where it's fast enough to go out there and lead the race. You know, it's a lot of guys worked awfully hard this weekend to get this car prepared and, and running like it is. I mean, yesterday afternoon, I mean, we had a terrible race car. I mean, we were absolute junk. And come in here this morning, changed everything on it, and actually got a pretty decent race car now. So you just can't say enough about all the hard work and all the guys and the driver's doing one heck of a job, driving his tail off out there. So everything's going good. What's your what's your car need right now? It's just a little bit loose up off the corners you know, and a little bit tight in the center. I mean, I guess that's a chassis man's nightmare, pushing in the center and loose off. But we think we can get it adjusted and hopefully get things right. Okay, this important looking guy behind you needs to talk to you so I can get out of the way and I'll throw it back to John Kernan. Well, Rick Mass told us that uh, he was not going to be able to finish the race if it got started, so they've called the drivers back to their cars, and David Green is sitting in the uh, Hooters Pontiac. David, a uh, couple laps down, but uh, Rick says you might be able to make your way to the front, huh? I don't know. Rick done an awful good job on this thing. I tell you, uh, you know, I hadn't got to practice any yet, but thanks to NASCAR, they let me uh, stand in. Thanks to Richard Jackson and those guys uh, for having confidence in me, but... We're going to see how it feels and uh, kind of take it from there. But uh, Rick's done a great job feeling bad, so I really hated to see the rain come for his benefit. It looked like Rick might just stay in here all day if the rain hadn't come. Well, I think so. You know, he was running awful well right there and really a contender. And he's got all four fenders on it at Bristol, and that's a plus. So uh, we're going to try to do the best we can for uh, Richard and, and, uh, and Rick and try to take this home and thing home in one piece. Yeah, was that the orders, uh, take it in with uh, all the fenders intact? Well, that's the plan here at Bristol, whether you're a driver, the owner, or what. So uh, that's what we're going to try to do. And, uh, again, I want to thank those guys. But, uh, and Rick could get the feeling better. All right, thank you. That's David Green has replaced Rick Mast in the number one car. 
Drivers are in their cars. We're waiting for the track crew to get a few of the trouble spots dry. And when that happens, we will be able to go back to racing. We've been red since 3.35, going on a half an hour. We'll be right back. The NASCAR Winston Cup Series comes to Bristol International Raceway two times a year in the spring for this Sunday afternoon event and then at night uh, in the fall. And we look forward to both visits here. The track is one of the most interesting and there are a lot of great fans here too. There's some interesting things going on pit side. Here's the doctor. They're going to open pit road, guys, for both the cars on the lead lap and the cars that are lapped down because when the caution came out for the rain and the five car pitted, pit road was actually open, so any car on the lead lap could have pitted at that time prior to the red coming out. So it would be unfair to penalize cars a lap down and hold them out of the pit. So now everyone can come in. You see the 24 cars pitted, the three car, Earnhardt and Company, Rusty Wallace, the Miller Daniel and Graf Proof, working on his part, Mark Martin, the overhead camera, see Steve Neal and Company. They're making an air pressure adjustment. Looking down pit road, you see the cars that are moving. Jeff Gordon is down and away. You see Mark Martin's crew still working. Here's Rusty Wallace as they all head back to turn one. The Mark crew is making an air pressure adjustment in all four tires. They said the car is just not handling. They must be too low in the air pressure. Finally, Martin Valvoline Ford is away. Battle there between Martin and Earnhardt to get off pit road. I'm not sure who came out first, but they will decide that as the rest of the field lines up behind the pace car. And we get set to resume the racing. 326 laps now completed, so it won't take long to finish this thing. It's Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace, Dale Earnhardt, Mark Martin, and Terry Lamont. Still under caution here at uh, Bristol. No resumption of the race yet. We're trying to figure out how many cars are on the lead lap and who goes where. Now on the racetrack, it's Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, and Terry Labonte. Um, however, Labonte, you know, made that pit stop there just before the red, and uh, I guess because he just didn't get around quick enough from the back stretch while those guys were pitting, he's fallen into third spot. And they put Mark Martin up in front of Dale Earnhardt have the NASCAR officials. We were red flag for almost 25 minutes. Almost 27. 27 minutes, okay. The monitor was well. Oh, 2646. Yes. Yeah. NASCAR determined that Mark Martin was in got the end of pit road faster than before it did Dan Earnhardt, so they flip up in the running order. Looks pretty good over there back of that mountain. BP didn't go rain anymore. No, I think we're uh, good to go for the rest of this race. And good. While we're trying to get down to our cars and get out of here, it will rain. <laughs> <laughs> It'll rain as hard as it has all day. Yeah, they say that there's maybe some heavy stuff coming yeah. in here later. later Sterling on. Marlin on pit road for an adjustment. And they're telling to stop. The NASCAR official is holding him now. I don't know if they're holding him for 15 seconds or a lot. Glover is up. What's the deal? He said. Mm, Tony, the pace car is coming. We're going another lap down. He's already two laps down. There oh. comes Larry McClure to fight the issue. He's doing what he was told. At That's tower. right. They're calling the shots up in the tower. Don't don't talk to me. <laughs> Well, obviously, Tony and uh, Larry are not happy with this situation because Sterling now, only now, is allowed to leave. Uh, here's Jerry. We're down here in the Kodak pits trying to find out exactly. Now, we were told, Tony, what? Uh, Tony is very, very upset. Let me see if we can find out from Larry McClure or some of the company. Larry. Why were they holding the car, Larry? Why were they holding the car? They said we pitted outside the stall with all this water over here. So they held you. So they held you a lap for being outside the box. I guess they did. That is Larry McClure, who's one of the co-owners. They were trying, according to Larry, to pit away from a puddle on pit road, and apparently NASCAR said that's not allowable. So uh, he'll be a lap down. Yep, he's three laps down now in 19th position. 
And the signal has been given. They'll get the green flag the next time around. The light is off on top of the face car. So far, we've had seven leaders and seven lead changes. Gordon, Wallace, Martin, Elliott, Skinner, Rudd, and Labonte have all gained five points by leading a lap. And so far, Jeff Gordon has led the most. And he is at the front of the field right now as the green comes out and we're back to racing. Five cars in the lead lap. Robert Presley trying to get one of his three laps, but he's down. Ricky Craven, Dale Jarrett, all those cars. And here comes Terry Lamonte. That's a battle for second spot. Whoa, Lamonte just slid to the inside of Rusty, and now it comes Mark Martin to take over that third spot. So Rusty is hung out at the moment. And Earnhardt's going to go as well. He's going to drop all the way back to fifth place. That's as far back as he can drop. In, in positions, he finds some other cars pass, but Bobby Lamonte's going to let him in. And he's got a spin. Darrell Walter some heavy damage to the back of the Western Auto Chevrolet. To break for Dale Jarrett if he can beat Jeff Gordon back to the line. Then Ricky Craven can get one of his. That's him, guys. That car's sitting on the outside of the track. Wow, Darrell Walter has hit that wall he hard. Yeah, sure the back end of that car is. And Darrell, don't go in place because that looks like gasoline that is. Uh... I can't even believe the car would even move, but he's yeah. trying. He, he doesn't know how much damage is done to the back of that car. It looks like gasoline that's on the back of the racetrack, and uh, I wouldn't want Daryl to be trying to drag something across there and spark. So somebody tell him. I mean, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm sure that the crew is telling him to turn it off. Oh, what a tough break. Boy, that is a tough break for Daryl. And so much optimism going in. So Dale Jarrett now comes, comes to clear around the racetrack and is back on the lead lap in sixth place. Well, three cars made up a lap on it. Robert Presley, Ricky Craven, and Dale Jarrett. And we have a red flag condition right now. Yeah, there is a considerable amount of gasoline down there on the racetrack. And, and let's, uh, let's just get that cleaned up as quickly as possible, Jerry. Well, Benny, immediately you were talking about cutting it off. That's exactly what the NASCAR official and Pete Peterson here in the in the pits uh, had told Daryl. Pete, you guys immediately were tearing, Dar telling Daryl to cut it off because of the fuel coming out of the back. Uh, it must have busted the uh, neck or something and let the fuel spill out. I, I don't think he knew that. He was trying to get going, that's all. Did he say what happened up there, Pete? He hasn't said anything yet. Okay, that's Pete Peterson and the crew. They're going to try to make their way over to DW, but uh, fortunately NASCAR right there immediately saw the fuel coming at us. Benny Parsons did and Ned upstairs and Bob and ran over here and said, tell him to cut it off, cut it off, which DW immediately did. Well, we've been concerned with moisture on the racetrack all day, and now they are putting moisture down on it, trying to dilute the fuel that came out of that car. That could have been a very bad situation. Darrell's not happy with somebody. But whatever caused this situation, certainly he's, he's unhappy because he tore his race car up, had a great run going here today, but I believe that he's a little concerned about somebody that maybe got into him. He was in 11th position when this thing occurred. Yeah, there you can see he yep. makes contact with somebody. Dark somebody. Car. Jeff Bodine, I guess. Yep. Yep. Jeff Bodine, the seven car. And Darrell spins up, and there we see the gasoline start coming out of the car. There's the front of Jeff's car, and uh, it does show signs of uh, having had contact with Daryl. Once again, we'll show the, he's already hit the wall. He's hit, he hit the wall up there where it says Food City, and now the gasoline is coming out of the car. And it's amazing that the thing is all that metal was dragging across the track did not put up a spark, but luckily it didn't. Yep, you're right. And all the cars going by on the inside. Gasoline just comes mm. gushing out of the car. Well, you could see it. It was the, the reddish color, so it was gasoline. And Jerry is with Daryl Waltrip. DW, first of all, a hard lick. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm in pretty good shape. I guess getting out over and walking around a little bit before that uh, got freshened up a little bit, but uh, I knew these restarts were going to be real treacherous and uh, pit road deal, you know, where you come in and everybody gets doubled up. It's going to be exciting here for a while. I hate I got involved in it. I was having a pretty decent run. I think I could have had a pretty good finish, but uh, we'll get them next week. At least we showed some promise today. That's more we've been showing. Showed a lot of promise, D.W. Now, we, we, the crew was trying to tell you to cut it off. You were trying to get it refired and going. Probably had no idea there was fuel pouring, pouring out of the back of the car. 
No, I've seen drivers, you know, I've seen them at Indy try to fire their cars up and the motor ain't even on there, so I didn't have any idea that the, I didn't have any idea the fuel cell was busted. I knew it hit pretty hard, but uh, I just wanted to try to get back in the garage and, and get out, you know, get Stevie and get with the kids and we'll get them into, what's the next race? Wil Wilkesburg. My favorite racetrack. <laughs> Okay, DW will get him at Wilkesbury. Give Stevie a big hug. Let's go up to Bill Weber, who's standing by with Childress. Okay, and Richard, let's go back to that last uh, yellow flag after the red flag when the cars came down pit road. Some confusion here and uh, some some disappointment by some of these teams. Well, you know what, you know what we thought that they had run a couple of laps and get everything back up to speed and get everybody single back out. We were still sitting on the back stretch whenever they. Uh, the 24 and the six came in, but I guess uh, according to NASCAR, they had opened the. The five car had opened the pit, pit road earlier, so, you know, I'm a little confused, but I'll I'll go with her call. And you had a little trouble getting out, too, because some of the traffic down here? Yeah, you know, the other cars had pitted uh, that were a lap down, so I don't know. You know, normally they start them in the rear, so I don't know unless they figured that was the second time by. Okay, that's Richard Childress, and what happened when the three car tried to leave, the 28 car, which is pitted right in front of them, was there and Dale had to go forward back up and then pull around the 28 to get out and that cost him obviously a few seconds too. They weren't real happy down here. Everybody's calmed down a little bit but that last uh, situation down here was not very pleasant. You saw Dale Earnhardt take his goggles and pull it away from his head. If you don't do that they steam up. Mm -hmm. So you have to take that just like a, a defroster on the car. And again, we'll tell you what's going on. They're diluting this fuel that ran out of Darrell Waltrip's car with water, and they have to do that before they lift the car off the track in case there is a spark or something that might cause the gasoline to ignite. So they pretty well got it diluted now, and in just a moment they'll be dragging the car off the racetrack. Then we'll dry up the wet spot and get back to racing. Jeff Gordon still leads here at Bristol. There's Darrell Waltrip's car being uh, taken back into the infield area. A lot of damage, fuel completely out of the car, and uh, the cleanup here on the main straightaway still is continuing. Still losing a little fuel mm -hmm. as they're taking the car back. So, yeah. But that piece on the front that's dragging the ground is fiberglass, and that will not throw up a spark. So. Good. All right, let's take a look at our Bush race recap. Jeff Gordon, we've completed 335 laps, and he's led 141 of them. Seven lead changes, five caution periods for 31 laps, and the average speed 76. There are the drivers who have led a lap and picked up the five bonus points. Bobby Labonte has led two laps. And now let's show you the drivers that are out of the race. Only three officially. Elton Sawyer, Mike Skinner, and most recently, Daryl Waltrip. Jerry is with uh, Gary Dehart. Now, we saw Terry Labonte pit just before the red flag came out, Gary. So then the red flag comes out. You guys have already pitted for four tires. You're at the back of the field. You would expect when the uh, caution comes back out that you would be the leader because everyone else would pit. But it didn't happen that way. Uh, yeah, I, I know. But what happened was when they turned the cars loose, where they had them stop back there on pit road. Uh, or on the track, the, the leaders kind of went ahead and started running pretty hard, and, and uh, uh, the pace car was missing too. If you notice that, but anyway, uh, w when we finally got around here, the lead cars already pit and beat us off the pit road. NASCAR said that's where we're supposed to be, so I guess that's where we're supposed to be, Jerry. So in other words, uh, if everyone had gotten going in the same at the same time, probably the five car would already have passed everyone that had pitted. But as it was, with cars still getting cranked up back there, you guys had to fall in line behind guys that had just freshly pitted. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing because the leaders uh, they chose not to pit earlier, and we did pit. We didn't get caught with that red flag thing, so we should have been out. Come back on when when the pitting was through, we should have been the leader. But uh, it also opened the door for all the lap down traffic to pit the first lap too so really everybody was out on the racetrack running around no one knew where they need to be and uh, I, I, I guess we just ended up where we need to be or where we ended up but uh that's third spot that's not bad well you're second now anyway yeah well that's pretty good from what we were looking like earlier you know it was almost a lap down and then we got that rain shower and, and it caught, caught us up you know we were a little bit tight that time uh, uh car should be a little bit better now all right, a little smile out of Gary Dehart. So they got a break prior to the red coming out. Then the NASCAR being fair at letting everyone pit uh, ended up putting them back in third spot when we got ready to restart. 
Let's go to Bill Weber. Hey, Top Perry, you got your lap back. How about that? Yeah, how about that, huh? How about that Dale Jarrett? Driving some of a gun, isn't he? He's having a good day out there. Now, Now, what'd you do with the car? Um, Freed it up a little bit, but now that we got our lap back and we're on the tail end of the lead lap, we're going to come in and put on four, four more tires. And so you got nothing to lose now? Oh, no, got nothing to lose now. Just going to, in case he ran through debris or whatever, we're just going to come in and get four more tires and hopefully drive it to the front. No more rain. No more rain. Now we got our lap back. We can win this thing. Okay, Dale Jarrett coming to the front. You heard it here live on ESPN. <laughs> Cleanup is still going on. Uh, and look at this. He's beating a hasty retreat, isn't he? <laughs> he is out of here. Uh-oh, now how am I going to get over this thing, he said, huh? Uh-oh. Where's the steps? Where's the steps? Oh, they're going to gonna, they're gonna open the gate for Daryl. Well, ain't that nice. That's very nice. Oh, that's right. Stevie is not going to be able to climb over the fence. Yeah, so Daryl could do it. You know, we talked earlier about how Daryl is the top performer here at Bristol in the modern era with 42 races and an average finish of 7.4. You know who the guy is who's second on that list as Daryl gets a big round of applause? Who is the second top performer here at Bristol in the modern era? BP? Not necessarily an active driver. BP? How about that? Really? Yeah. Did you really? Know that? No. 7.5 was, was your average finish in 24 races here at Bristol. Really? That's good. Yep. Wow. How about that? I'm impressed. So am I. And for that, Benny, you win absolutely nothing. That's what I figured. About what I want for that 7.5. <laughs> Still a lot of clouds over there beyond the mountain, but it doesn't look like it's going to rain anymore. We should be back to racing in a moment. Now we have the jet dryer at the trouble spot down here on the main straightaway, drying the area, and uh, it shouldn't take that thing too long to uh, get this moisture up out of the racetrack, and we'll be back to competition once again. Well, we had a little bit of a controversy down on pit road a while ago regarding Sterling Marlin. Doc, what's the latest? Well, Bob, I'll tell you, that jet dryer isn't nearly as hot as these guys were about <laughs> 10 minutes ago here in the Kodak pits. I'm with Larry McClure and Larry. NASCAR now had looked at the tape, we are told, and is trying to correct that situation. Well, I hope so. Uh, we didn't think we'd done anything wrong, and uh, we didn't pit the first time by because they told us not to, that we couldn't. So uh, a couple of mistakes made, and, it, and it, uh, it cost us quite a bit because we felt like we could get our lap back. We were about the fastest car on the racetrack, so I'm sure they'll do the right thing. I hope they do. Talking about how much of a family this is, there were other crew chiefs that actually came up and told the NASCAR official here in your pits. I know Steve Mill and others came up and said, hey, the four car wasn't over the line. Uh, he had a right, he had the right side tires on the line because of some fuel back there. I think all of us, there was fuel back there, but I think all of us work together and race together each week, and we don't want to take anything from the other people. Steve was looking out for us. He, he wanted the right thing to be done. Same thing would happen to Steve. We'd do the same thing. So uh, I think they'll do the right thing. That's Larry McClure, the car owner. What about it, guys? A Ford team and a Ford crew chief helping a Chevrolet team, trying to do what he thought was right by helping the NASCAR official. This is what happened just a few minutes ago when uh, Larry and Tony were a little unhappy with the call that was made from the NASCAR officials. <laughs> NASCAR officials said, look, that call was made upstairs. I didn't make that call. Tony, he's now, who, who, can I, who can I argue with? Okay, I'll go over and talk to this guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Some good emotion there, Tony. He's a competitor. He, he is, is definitely yes, a competitor. Sir. Can't See? blame him. Yep. <laughs> crew was all laughing watching Tony and laughing. <laughs> Turn around and wave to us, guys. <laughs> They're probably not hearing audio. I guess They're they just don't hear audio. See. There oh, we there go. We go. <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> all right. The conversation is continuing. This thing... Uh, hasn't been uh, completely resolved, but uh, our Kodak moment continues. Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, keep our ear to the ground here and determine what happens and report to you what the final decision is in just a moment. We're going to take another break as the red flag continues to be waving over Bristol. Back at Bristol International Raceway, and we've had one delay after another. Couple of rain showers have moved over. This most recent red was because a lot of fuel spilled on the racetrack when Daryl Waltrip crashed, and they had to dilute it and then dry it off. 
and that has almost been completed. Now, we are almost to the point of where we were supposed to get off the air. The men's final of the Lipton Championships will be seen. Just uh, stay with us and you will see it because uh, Sports Center doesn't come on until 6 o'clock tonight, and we will certainly have our race completed and the opportunity to show you tennis between now and 6 o'clock. After Sports Center concludes at 6.30, the Women's Basketball NCAA Championship game, and then at 9 o'clock tonight, the 1996 baseball season opens, and ESPN will be there with opening night. That's at 9 o'clock. Bill Weber is with Robin Pemberton. Rusty Wallace is crew chief. Obviously, uh, you guys have had a great car today. How about it from here, Robin? Can you make it to the end if you stop once more? Uh, well, if no, we're going to have to stop for gas at least. We can go with about, believe it or not, with six to go. This isn't like Darlington where you can back pedal and, uh, you know, save the fuel. There, uh, with five or six cars on the lead lap, uh, there will be a few of them that will probably stop and top it off. I imagine the Chevrolets can go from here, but we can't. Yeah, you've been, you've had a, you have a great car. You guys have been excited about it since you tested up here. Yeah, we've been real excited. Uh, the car hasn't been perfect yet by any means. We've been a little loose early on, and uh, we've tightened the car up a little bit since then. Uh, we got bounced around on the outside there uh, on that last restart. So uh, I think we'll be better now than we have been. And the temperature's dropped about 15 degrees since we've last run real hard. So we'll see what happens. It might take a little adjusting on everybody's part. Okay, I almost saw him smile, almost. Uh, the three car apparently will not fire, and they're going to have to push start Dale Earnhardt to get this thing going again. His car is creeping slowly forward, and uh, maybe he'll get a little push from behind out there, huh, guys? Oh, no, Brussie's going to go around him. <laughs> Here comes the push truck. We'll pull, pull up behind Earnhardt. Going to try to crank it again. I think he's got a card. He's just ready to get his place in mind. Okay. Well, everybody will fall into position now. And we'll take a couple of laps around the racetrack and then be back to racing. We've completed 336 of the 500 here in the Food City 500. And we'll take a break. Be back with more right after. Back at Bristol where the cars are rolling and some pit stops being made. Now there is Sterling Marlin who's pulling out after getting some fresh tires on the left side. He was allowed to make up the lap, so he's only two laps down. Dale Jarrett has been in twice. I think he's got all four new now, doesn't he, Ned? Yeah, he changed two the other time. So he was at the tail, tail end of the whole field and could only change two tires at a time. So he now has four fresh ones. And before that, Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt came on to pit road to each get topped off. Doesn't take long to get the uh, to get the uh, cars topped off. See the Jack Rusty's car up just a little bit on the left side to get in every bit of fuel they can. Robin Pemberton said that they might be about six laps short. And so now they that came back the in. That could be the difference. And there is the first time that Dale Jarrett came in to get right side tires. And uh, they don't want to change all four at once because you can lose a lap that way. So he made two pit stops, four, four fresh tires. There's Jeff Bodine going out of the backstretch pits just ahead of the pace car. And now we're set to go back to racing. Jeff Bodine is in 19th position, two laps down. Ward Burton, Ricky Craven also making pit stops here on the main straightaway as the pace car continues to circle the racetrack with the caution light on. And Sterling Marlin. Uh, we, we talked about NASCAR maybe giving Sterling Marlin one of the lap back that uh, they penalized him. They did, in fact, give him a lap back. So. And the way they did that, they let him go out and pass the pace car and went around the racetrack so that it would show up proper on the scoring. They don't just mark an extra lap on the uh, scoring. They, they let him go around. We understand that it is raining again. Oh, yes, and it's... Uh, it's coming down pretty hard, isn't it? Yes. You can see the track getting wet already. Yes. It's darker over here. Oh, yeah. Some areas, too. And you can always tell when it's starting to rain because the umbrellas and the raincoats come out, and the fans are doing so down below us. And there is the roof camp showing the moisture, and Bill Elliott is back out, albeit without a nose. Where is he, Ned? Um, 28 right now. Yeah. About 18 laps down. 
Well, this has been a very frustrating day, hasn't it? We've had rain, rain, more rain, and a 19-minute red flag because of the spilled fuel from Daryl Walter's car. And there is the rain. The rain, yeah. It's showing up pretty good in the reflection from the lights. The crews once again move out to cover up their respective pit areas to keep them dry. But uh, we're not going to get a green flag here very soon. No, we won't. We will look at a Napa field summary to show you where the if all the drivers are running right now. These laps are being counted, by the way. We're up to 341 right now. There are six cars that are on the lead lap, just three one lap down, and a whole bunch that are two laps down. And there's a whole bunch of mouses. <laughs> 16 through 30, Ernie Irvin. A couple of laps down. Elton Sawyer credited with 37th today, the first car out. So David Blair back in Baseball, Arkansas. Sorry about that. And I hope you're doing some good on your sponsor search. Yes. It'd be great to see them get some riding on the side of that car. See Doyle Ford talking to the NASCAR officials. And evidently he understands what they're saying. By the way, you know, Darlington last week, Doyle dropped the green flag on one of the restarts, and they're red flag in the race again right now. Mm. He dropped the green flag on one of the restarts, so this week he took a rubber band and tied around that so he could put around his hand and so that wouldn't happen again. It's all right. Yeah. And I shouldn't bring it up. I won't bring it up anymore. So all this is the last time I'll mention it. <laughs> now that the world knows it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there is the red once again. Uh, it's uh, and He's gracefully, beautifully waving that red flag. Attaboy, Doyle. What a job you're doing. You Got to do something to get back in the good graces of Doyle. <laughs> not a good sight. Bill, what do you got? I just wanted to tell you, according to the radar, it's not raining here. So, <laughs> so we can go ahead and go because right here on the NASCAR radar, if you look where Bristol International Raceway is, mm -hmm. it's clear. So no, it's I mean, not raining. See all this stuff, though? Yeah. That's rain. Yeah. You know where it's coming? Right here. So here's the raceway. And right here, if you look real closely, you can see the Tri-Cities Airport. That's where my plane leaves in about an hour and a half without me tonight. To That's right. A, um, a lot of us. But, uh, Forget it. Yeah, so it is raining here now, and this stuff is coming. And uh, we're going to really have to play some dodgeball here to try and get the rest of these laps in. But cross our fingers. Hopefully we will. Let's see. In about uh, three hours, looks like it's going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, going to hang around for that? That'd be sure, good. No, I'll be get, here to that, the better that, end. That's why they have lights here. That's right. And we all know how much everybody loves the night race here at Bristol, right? The lights are on, by yes, the way. Yes, so we can been. get a preview of one of the best races of the year on the NASCAR circuit, the that's fall right. night race at Bristol here maybe today, and it'll be dry. So yeah. uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed, but we'll be hanging around and see what happens. Okay, well, we'll be here. And I'm not going anyplace. I want to see the last of these few laps. About 150 laps. Every one of these cars that are on the lead lap uh, have demonstrated their ability to lead and uh, possibly win this race. So it's going to be good when the thing resumes. The jet dryer is back out. We have seen it demonstrate earlier today that it doesn't take long to dry the track when it does stop raining and that dryer gets out there. So if it would just stop raining and give us about 45 minutes or an hour, we could get this thing in the books. In the meantime, we'll take another commercial break as the race fans now have donned their rain gear and brought out the umbrellas to ward off the moisture here at Bristol. Rain at Bristol right now, light rain, dry, wet racetrack, but uh, drying attempts are underway. There's the jet dryer here on the main straightaway. And evidently, Bill Weber, the report he had just a moment ago, evidently NASCAR, talking to weather people and looking at their radar, believes that they are not going to get enough rain that they will not be able to complete this race. Otherwise, they would just call it off right now and, and save everyone the misery. But they believe they're going to be able to get the racetrack dry and finish it. And we can see that, that the jet dryer is doing a pretty good job and the racetrack is already turning light. John Kernan with Ricky Craven. Gee, Ricky, we can't seem to uh, win for losing today, huh? But you're uh, doing a pretty good job running uh, ninth right now. I'll tell you what, when you come here, you better be prepared to scrap. I got a group of scrappers over there in the pits. They, uh, they're doing a great job. Charlie's been adjusting air pressure and changing the stagger a little bit. And uh, we got one of our laps back. And uh, the car, is, the longer we run, the better it gets. So 
pretty happy with the Kodiak car. Hey, what do you think about these fans up here? Through all this rain, there are very few of them have left. Unbelievable. You know, uh, they all have their ponchos. They're uh, day glow green, orange, pink, blue. Looks like a uh, looks like a big bowl of uh, fruity pebbles up there. You know, <laughs> looking from down here. But those guys are great. Bristol fans are great. You know, they suffered through this last year in the uh, in the rain and uh, when we were delayed and they had the wave going and. I just soon it kept going, but uh, I'm sure they would too. But we're all going to sit here. We got lights, so might as well hang on. We ain't going anywhere. Yeah, have, what do you guys do? You, what does this do to you as a driver? I mean, here we you start, you stop, you start, you stop. Uh, you know, is it almost like, well, let's just pack it up and go home? Well, it was a blessing for us. On lap 50, we had the worst possible situation happen to us that you could have and still be running at Bristol. The mirror fell off. So oh, when we got our red goodness. flag, uh, they had passed me some tie wraps, and I fixed it while we were in here. <laughs> All right, well, that's Ricky Craven currently sitting back here uh, in his car comfortably in ninth place. Let's go to uh, Dr. Jerry Punchin. Jerry, you got a, a TV star with you, or what? who's with you? Well, he's a TV star on Saturdays, and he's a heck of a race driver on Sundays, and uh, he makes the big bucks. I'm not sure. I'm sure it's got to be Sunday. I know he doesn't make the big bucks on Saturday, but Kyle, having a good run today. Yeah, we're not too bad. Uh, you know, we had a little miscommunication on that last thing. Uh, we thought you couldn't pit on the first lap, and everybody pitted, so we lost four or five positions there. We went from ninth or tenth to back to 15th or 16th, so that kind of hurt us a little bit. Car's really good. Car's running good. Car's driving good. And, um, you know, I don't know. Hopefully they turn the lights on out here, so hopefully they'll sell a lot of hot dogs here. Benny, sell a lot of hot dogs. Sell a lot of hot dogs here so they can uh, afford this. Hopefully they don't, won't take it out of our purse. Now, you guys, you said the... Uh, you were pretty tickled with the way the car was right. We talked about the fact. Hey, I hesitate to say this. We talked about it a moment ago, but uh, you don't. To a ago. Well, yeah, you do. Yeah, I talked to Daryl, and his car didn't have a scratch on it. I said, but but yours doesn't have a scratch on it. No, ours. We're we're really good. We're just we're not great and we're not bad. We're just right there. You know what I mean? And guys that are better, they just come up and they pass you and they go on and they don't beat on you too bad. And the guys I'm able to pass, uh, you know, they make a slip and you get up under them in a corner and they give you room. And you know, there's a lot of give and take racing out there. There's a lot of guys. This shows why most of these guys are Winston Cup drivers, because they're really, really professional drivers out here. Does doing this on Saturday, holding this microphone, make you want to stay in that race car for a number of years? For the rest of my life, I think. <laughs> After listening to you guys, and especially the ones in the truck, I just want to fire on the guys in the truck that scream at me on my headset every week. But, uh, no, I, I enjoy doing the Saturday stuff. I, I feel like I learn a lot on Saturday, watching the tires, watching what the pit crews do, whether they change two or whether they change four. It's not like driving by any stretch of imagination, but it's a lot of fun. Hey, Kyle, thanks for joining us. Uh, Kyle, having a great run today. Let's, uh, let's check in up pit road. And here's somebody else who's having a spectacular run. Dick Trickle, eighth, one lap down. But you can make that up, can't you? Yeah, something like 24 hours ago we were trying to make the show, and uh, we're eighth, one lap down. And, you know, I got to give the health source people a lot of credit because Mark Smith, the owner, you know, he, he put a pretty good group of, assembled some good people, you know. And you know, we let, lost Jeff Hammond here just uh, early part of the week. And, but we got people in the house, Peter Suspenzo, you know, and, you know, a lot of guys, you know, uh, that we could just replace them. And we, we don't have to go outside to do it at this point, but you know, I'm just happy to be in the show. I said I'd rather stand in the rain tomorrow than go home, and uh, we'll do a little of that, but we have a race in here. I know NASCAR, they'll try to get the whole bit in, but you know, we're running, you know, we ain't quite there. We're just a little bit loose. Uh, hopefully got it better this round, and you know, I'm just happy to be here, and I'll, we'll be at the next one. Yeah, that's your style, though. Isn't it a loose race car you like that? Well, yeah, I do, but it about snatched sideways out of my control a couple times. I and, saw uh, it once coming out of four there. I, I'm having to, you know, back down and drive. It's uh, that's how I was still eighth, you know. And, uh, the guys are really working good with me. That's what's, been, you know, the, you know, we take Friday. We, we're going to miss the show. We come here uh, Saturday morning and we just, you know, change everything that we could think would make the car better. And we did get the car, you know, three about three tenths faster. Put it in the race and uh, then went into late practice and changed some springs and. You know, the car was working pretty good late yesterday, so I says, I said to God, let's put a turnip bite in this thing and put it on line, and we had 50 minutes left to practice, and that don't happen very often. Okay, and he's eighth right now, guys. Dick Trickle, here's what we're going to do, folks. It's going to be a while before we resume this race. We're going to send you to tennis. Now, when they resume this thing, we're going to come right back. You're not going to miss anything, anything, so don't go anywhere. And we'll also update you during the commercial breaks of tennis. So again, stay with us because when this thing resumes, you will come right back here and you won't miss a thing. We'll update you during commercial breaks. But right now, we are going to go to tennis because we are under a red flag rain delay here at Bristol. 
Not a great deal of change here at Bristol as the track drawing continues. We still are getting a very light rain over the racetrack. Our leader is Jeff Gordon, followed by Terry Labonte. There are 342 of the 500 laps completed here in the Food City 500. Again, we will continue to update you, and if we get a start, we will come right back. In the meantime, let's return to tennis. Well, the conditions have deteriorated substantially since we last talked with you. Heavy rain falling over the racetrack for about the last 15 minutes, and it continues to rain very hard. We're going to stay here until some decision is made. We could get a decision very soon. We will continue to update you during commercial breaks, and again, when and if this thing does resume, you will see all of the race. But right now, quite frankly, it doesn't look very good because it's continuing to rain very, very hard at Bristol. Let's go back to tennis. Welcome back to Bristol International Raceway, where the Food City 500 is under a rain delay. Actually, this is the third rain delay of the day. The race was started late. Then we had one in the middle. It's almost stopped raining, and the track almost dried, and then a very heavy shower, the heaviest of the day, as a matter of fact, moved over about 10 minutes ago, and it's still raining quite a bit here, and so, the uh, trucks continue to circle the racetrack, and we hope that we can resume the race. Now we see that it's almost stopped raining completely. So with the trucks out there and with the jet dryer, there's still hope that we can resume this race. Of course, the lights are on, and we can go as late as NASCAR wants to. But a decision is expected before too very long. Still raining very lightly at the moment at Bristol. So in the meantime, we return you to tennis. The Food City Winston Cup race at Bristol International Raceway is still under a rain delay. It's not raining hardly at all right now. And as you can see, we have trucks and jet dryers and pace cars and just about everything else out there on the track trying to dry it. But uh, for the moment, we're still under the rain delay. So we'll talk to some race drivers. Uh, first, to Dale Jarrett. Well, Dale Jarrett's still sitting in his car and... Uh, Dale, I don't know. What do you think? We're going to get this thing restarted? Well, I'm ready if they do. Uh, I hope so. You know, one, one advantage we got here, we've got lights, and uh, we can stay here for a while. And certainly these fans paid a lot of money and spent a lot of time to get here to Bristol to see us race for 500 laps, and we'd like nothing better. And Plus, we're back in the lead lap, so uh, let's go race some more and see what we can do with it. Yeah, what a job that you did on the track. The, the crew has done in the pits taking this backup car from dead last all the way up into the top ten. Yeah, we've had an extremely good day. I tell you, Todd did a great job. We, we talked for about three hours last night uh, trying to hash this thing out and decide exactly what we needed for this car. We made a lot of changes this morning, and the crew did a terrific job just getting those changes made. And, and uh, then they, we've adjusted a little bit here, but the car's been pretty close. Don't know that we're as good as those front couple guys, but uh, as long as we've got time to work on it a little bit more, uh, which we've made another adjustment, I think that we can maybe give them a run. Okay, last week uh, run out of fuel, a couple laps to go, and uh, this week uh, you were telling me earlier you're good right now, right? They say we can make it. I don't have to save any fuel and don't have to worry about running out. So we're good to go from here. Uh, you know, it'll just be a matter of, uh, you know, what the caution flags when they fall, if we need tires or anything. But as far as fuel goes, uh, we can make it. Well, that's Dale Jarrett sitting in his car. He's ready to go racing right now, sitting in the sixth position, Bob. There are 158 laps to go in this race. 342 have been completed, so... Dale thinks that he can go the rest of the way without fuel, and Bill Weber is with one of the Labonte brothers. I'm actually here with both of them, oh, Bobby good. and Terry, and Terry is second right now, and Bobby is seventh, one lap down. You've had a good run here today, and you, you got in there and got you some uh, tires when it started raining the first time, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, it didn't, it didn't work out quite <laughs> like it should have, but uh, uh, we, we, uh, we did the right thing. It just didn't work out right. Yeah, chasing your teammate right now, huh? Yeah, you know, so uh, we ran pretty good early in the race. In the second set of tires there, I'd, we made an adjustment on the car, and it, it uh, got too tight, so hopefully we got it back right again. Okay, let's talk to Bobby Labonte. Obviously, uh, your seventh would like to make up that lap when we get back to green flag racing. Yeah, I really would. You know, right now we're, we're next in line to, to move up to the front row on the inside, so, so that's, that's good, you know, but uh, it's going to be tough to beat, beat these guys on the outside anyway. But, you know, I'm kind of like Terry. You know, the second set of tires, we didn't make an adjustment and just didn't work out quite as good. I was, didn't really know which way to go. I thought I'd just leave it like it was, and it didn't work out. So my car wasn't as good the second time. But, 
Uh, I think it'll be better this time. Hopefully, we made the right adjustments. We'll try it again. Now that video game where you race on these tracks, did, do you have Bristol on there? Yeah. I get, does it rain when you go to Bristol? No, and I usually end up with all four fenders on it, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe he's telling us something. He's seventh, Terry's second, and uh, we're waiting for the uh, track to dry. And let's go to Jerry Punch. Well, we're dry. We're up inside the front of the NASCAR truck, guys. I'm sitting here with Ray Everham. Ray, you just told me a minute ago it's the first time you've been up here that you weren't being chewed out, so it's a pretty nice visit for you for, for a change. Yeah, it is. Uh, we, Jeff and I came up here to discuss our concern with the fans, um, you know, that we probably need to end this race because uh, it's cold and it's damp and those poor people up there sitting on concrete. And, you know, we're just concerned about the fan safety at this point. Not, not to mention you're leading the race. If they ended it, you guys would win it, of course. Uh, but I know you're concerned, but... Uh, Everyone else says, you know, that, that the rains uh, are moving away. Well, we're sitting here watching the radar, and it's not. It, it really does not look good. I, I'm, I don't know where they're getting that information from, but it's, boy, it's, <laughs> it doesn't look good from where I'm sitting. In fact, Ray's even heard some thunder, he says. I mean, I haven't heard any, but I think Ray hurts. Let's see. This is, this is the latest weather radar. Just came up a moment ago right behind me, and let's take a look. And uh, Jeff Gordon, uh, let's let you be a weather radar man. Come here, man, Jeff. That's where we are right there, and it looks uh, sort of ugly. Looks to me like it hasn't moved in the right direction. Uh, well, it depends on who, who's surveying it. but <laughs> Not ugly to you, though, is it? <laughs> uh, you know, hey, we'll run this thing no matter what. Uh, you know, that's what this is all about, to give, give a, a good show for everybody. And, and we want to win it fair and square, but it is not looking good the way, the way that report's showing. So we'll, we'll be here for the duration. Well, it is starting to rain outside. We can see out the windows are starting to come down again outside. And as you can see, folks, behind us, all this green area and the yellow area, even more intense showers on this radar. This is the latest picture that came up just about a minute and a half, two minutes ago. This is the latest uh, weather radar. Jeffrey, let me ask you this again. Uh, this, this, if, if the race were to end now, you would gain more spots, as many maybe as three more spots in the points. What an incredible three or four events you guys have had. Well, you know, thing, things have been going well, but, I mean, it's preparation. These guys have been giving me real good cars, but it certainly is not over yet, and, and I'm not going to jinx myself or anybody else until uh, we either see the checkered flag or, or NASCAR makes a decision here. Ah, superstitious race driver. Doesn't want to say I've won it, but uh, you're going to sit here and watch and wait. But when we, if it is a decision made, we'll talk to Jeff Gordon if and then he is the winner. Let's go to John Curtin. A lot of standing by with Ricky Rudd. And Ricky, kind of a streak on the line for you here. You're sitting 14th with uh, 150 so laps to go, and uh, you haven't finished outside the top 10. Doesn't, doesn't look good, does it? Well, this weather doesn't look good. You know, we've got a shot at finishing in the top 10 if they get going, but we also got a good shot at finishing 18th, so it could go either way. Our old, you know, our old car got going better there at the, at the end. We like to see it get going again, but not a whole lot we can do about Mother Nature. That's, that's exactly true. And also, Ernie Irvin is back here. And uh, Ernie? Well, what, what more can you say? What more can you add to that, huh? Uh, you know, I mean, we, we'd all like to, to go racing some more, you know. Um, just, you know, I mean, the fans, you know, love to see us race, and um, it'd be nice to be able to, to go another 150 laps and, you know, hopefully be able to move up some more positions. But, um, you know, right now all, all the fenders are still on it, so we might be better off just loading it on the trailer. Oh, is, is that the official opinion? Um, not, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Let, let's go to Bill Weber uh, with someone who did the uh, shortest relief driver stint in history, probably. Bill? I uh, had to wake David Green up. He's exhausted from today's activities. What, what did you do, one lap? One lap under the green, and that car handled great on one lap. Had new tires and all, but I tell you, Rick done a great job. He was feeling bad, and I said, there ain't no way Rick's going to get out of this Hooters Pontiac because that thing was running good. And then the rain came, and it stopped, and then really everything hit him, but so he threw me to the wolves. And we had one lap, but, you know, now the rain's kind of done, done us in bad here. So I don't know. But I want to thank Richard Jackson and everybody at Hooters for, and NASCAR for giving me an opportunity uh, of a lifetime again to try to run a Winston Cup car. And uh, so far, so good. Didn't you drive uh, Labonte's uh, 18 car here at this race a year ago? Yeah, I did, you know. And, and Bobby did a great job with a broken shoulder for 100 laps, and I got in it for 20 and tore it all to pieces. But, <laughs> you know, what an opportunity there again. And Does Rick know that? I didn't tell him. <laughs> I didn't tell Richard Jackson either. But, you know, it was a fluke thing right there, uh, unfortunate deal. But again, any, anyway, anytime you can get in a Winston Cup car, it's a great opportunity, especially for me, hoping to move up one day. And, uh, you know, again, this is not an easy situation, but Rick is comfortable with it. And, you know, I wish he wasn't feeling bad because he was really, really running good in the car. And uh, 
I think they got things turned around, but uh, who knows what's going to happen now. Yeah, hey, you're the Bush Points leader. Real quick, how do you keep your nose clean at Hickory next week? Well, same old thing. You know, qualify good, and the guys gave me a great car. The Caterpillar cars are in really good. We just need that little much at the very end, and we're going to get it, and Hickory might be the place, but uh, we're looking at that big picture, too, and it's a long way to go, but we're working on it. Okay, and you're not too tired to go back out there and finish this thing if it stops raining. No, but I haven't put a scratch on it yet, Bill, so uh, we'll kind of see where it pl plays out. Okay, got one lap in. Maybe we'll get to share of the prize money here at Bristol today. He's been working real hard for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fans are sticking around. A lot of them have left now. Don't get the wrong idea, but uh, still some of them are remaining in their seats and trying to wait out the weather that uh, just really doesn't look good. Looks like more rain might be off the third turn headed this way. Oh, somebody lost a lug nut. It's going to get washed away. It's, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> it's wet already. <laughs> and somebody's gloves are going to be wet, too, laying on top of that wall. It's like it started to rain again, isn't it? Yeah, you can yeah, see it coming, coming down pretty good now. Turn two over there. It's turn three. It's yep. uh, raining. Oh, well, we are going to wait it out here. We're not going anywhere, so don't you. We'll be back with more of our rain show from Bristol in just a moment. Back at a wet Bristol International Raceway. We are still here. The cars and drivers are still here. Few fans remain, but uh, so does the rain, unfortunately. Let's take a look at the uh, rundown at the 342 lap mark. You can see that six cars are on the lead lap. And Dale Jarrett back in sixth spot. It says that he started seventh. That's really not right. He actually started about 37th because on that qualifying lap, he crashed and had to go to a backup car and start at the very rear of the field. So he has gained 31 spots. Now 16 through 30. Ernie Urban in 16th position. Lots of cars that are two laps down. They, there's a lot of positions that could really change and that if we should be able to get this thing going again. Then you see there are, what, four cars that are four laps down. One car just three laps down. Brett Bedine's in a lap by himself there. And Darrell Waltrip is out of the race. He crashed hard uh, just before the red flag and put himself out of the race. He's shown right now in 26, but if we resume, he's going to drop back further than that. As a matter of fact, Darrell Walter, they threw the red flag after he crashed, and one that's one reason we've only got 342 laps in. We'd have more, but we stopped about 15 minutes trying to clean up the gasoline where he crashed. And I received 31 through 37. Elton Sawyer, the very first car out today, and Mike Skinner, the second car out. And John Kernan is down with Jimmy Spencer. Mr. Excitement, John. Mr. Excitement right now in the 13th spot. Uh, rolling the eyes there. What's that all about, Jimmy? We've not had an eventful day today, really. Uh... I, I just want to run a whole lot better. I thought we were going to run a whole lot better, and we just never got the car right. And uh, you know that it's raining harder and harder, and we'll take 13th and go to the ranch, so to speak. But uh, we're off a little bit, and uh, hopefully that we'll get it more dialed in. We're going to test some more stuff, and our shot combination is just not quite right. We're a little bit too tight in the center of the corner. I'm sure everybody's complaining about that. I tell you what, though, this is an interesting Bristol because uh, a lot of give and take today, a lot more than I've ever seen uh, ever at Bristol. So. Uh, our car's all in one piece, all four fenders is on, so that's important compared to what sometimes have had happen here. Yeah, there haven't, hasn't really been uh, that many cars torn up today like we normally see in the past. Is that a result of what uh, Gary Nelson and the guys told you and told you guys in the uh, driver's meeting this morning, you know, to be careful? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. I just think there's so much emphasis put on the Winston Cup championship, Winston Cup points. Uh, Winston put so much money into the point fund, and uh, fans are so interested in where you are in the points. I think right now you can win two or three races this year and, and uh, finish 30th in the points, and they'll forget about you. But I think if you finish in the top 10 in points, people are going to remember that. Plus, you get to go on a stage at New York, and I think that's an important part. I think the whole aspect of the sport's changing for that, you know, because uh, the thing is, is that... Uh, you know, if you are the Winston Cup champion, you get a lot of perks with it. But uh, if you get a top 10 of points, you get a lot of perks. So all in all, that's what our gun is this year, is gunning for a top 10 of points. And, uh, you know, we uh, have not had the luck so far this year, but we've also had good runs uh, taken away from us. So I guess that's the luck I'm talking about, really. But, you know, today we were lucky in a way because uh, to be running 13th, only two laps down, we could have been 20 laps down or whatever, crashed like Daryl did, unfortunately for him. I hope he's all right. I did see he's all right. He walked across the racetrack. Yeah. But all in all, those are things that's happened to me in the past here. And uh, instead of finishing 13th, 14th, or maybe even 8th, uh, instead you're finishing 38th. So uh, hopefully uh, if the rain does subside, uh, 
which I don't think it will, but uh, I think we're going to take 13th and go on into, uh, I think, where is our next, oh, Easter next week. <laughs> That's All right, right we get that up. We, we go to Easter next week. <laughs> Man, that, that was philosophical almost. That was, that was almost a textbook style there, some kind of academic type thing. Hey, uh, have you seen Bill Weber around anywhere? Bill Weber. Yeah, you, and you, you probably noticed if you saw him that out in this rain, you know, I mean, Jimmy, our hair's kind of messed up. Well, Bill's hair is not even messed up, but I think he's in the trailer next door to us. So, uh, Bill, take it away. I'm here with Kenny Wallace. I just came by to break some bad news to you. You're 158 laps down. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I'm going to get in one of those red trucks that are going around the racetrack right now and run 150 laps. <laughs> now I'm going to be on the lead lap. And then they can call it and I'll go home. <laughs> That'd be a good situation because your car is a little banged up. Yeah, darn it. You know, I guess uh, we had a great qualifying run and we were running eighth. And uh, I don't know what happened. Maybe you guys up there got a replay of it. And I can, I can uh, rest assured that... Uh, I guess I spun out and got hit. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Bill, it said it best. One of his crewmen stopped me. He says, um, you know, every time Bill comes here, he says there's a 75% chance you're going to wreck. Oh, great. Everybody. <laughs> and I said, well, Dick Trickle taught me that it's always 50% your fault for just going on the racetrack. <laughs> uh, you know, Bristol's tough, and darn it, you know, um, I was a little disappointed because we've had such a good year going and, uh, you know, drop us down the points a little bit. But we're a new team, and things that get better yeah, you're having a great year though i mean throughout today and you're doing real well yeah but you know um it got to going you we, we ran a lot of green laps here i was getting the car fixed and went out and heck run over 100 laps of green and uh you know i thought darn i wish i could be part of this this is getting to look pretty good and uh then of course they bunched it up and daryl got put in the wall there and so uh, it got back to being no bristle so anytime you put them side by side you can pretty well go to Vegas and bet odds that there's going to be a big one. You were following that two car there before he ran into trouble. Well, we had a good deal going, you know. It was we were only 30 laps in the wreck, 30 laps into yeah, the race. Into the race when I got wrecked, and you know, and, and me and Rusty were kind of running along there, and he was checking me, and, and I just did the, you know, go on and pass me here, and then he opened up a hole, and I went with him, and we went by Ricky Rudd, and um, had a restart, and I got a little loose coming off of two there, and like I say, 30, 40 laps into the race, and we got. We're, here we are wrecked <laughs> so, okay. in the rain in the rain i wish it i wish you just call it when go home <laughs> okay. well, we'll be standing by for that we'll see if they call it or if we finish we'll be waiting down here back up to you guys hey director i wish the next time you go down that don't go down where they're eating something kind of just take the camera and go over because Benny, you have had enough to eat up here this no, afternoon it's you surely can't be hungry it's supper time I'm he's you. had cookies he's had brownies he's had pan pound cake <sighs> i tell you it is getting close to dinner time. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still raining at Bristol. Raining rather hard, as a matter of fact. But we will wait it out. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It's been a long day at Bristol International Raceway. It isn't over yet. Hey, here's a guy that uh, better turn his hat upside down or something. <laughs> He's collecting water I'm in it. I'm telling you, <laughs> if his hat doesn't leak, he could have a gallon of water. That's a sombrero, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Well, you can see it's still raining here, and uh, there has been no official word as yet from NASCAR as to uh, the status of this race. But uh, we're going to stay here for a while. John Kernan is down with Wally Dollenbach. Well, Wally, uh, what kind of day has it been for you, huh? <laughs> Actually, it's been pretty fun. Uh, we got we got caught a little bit at the beginning on a yellow flag, and uh, we came in for a pit stop and got down right away. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the car, and I'm getting reacquainted with this racetrack. Getting reacquainted with this racetrack. How, you know, everything, the first of the year, everything was so tentative, and uh, now you guys have got the sponsor with the Hayes Modem people. I mean, got to feel uh, like I guess everything is gravy right now, huh? Oh, Definitely, especially when you can pay the bills. That helps a lot. But uh, no, I'm really, happy. I'm really happy with the situation here. The Bud Moore team's been great. And with Hayes Modem coming on, it gives us an opportunity to know where we're going every week. And uh, we just want to get through the first first swing of the races. And then we know what kind of cars I like. And we've all worked together at those racetracks. So uh, this is a tough one. If we can just get through the next two here, um, I'm looking forward to May coming around. You know, even though you spent several years on the Winston Cup circuit, uh, you still have things to learn at some of these tracks, don't you? Don't and this is a good team to learn it with, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think you ever stop learning. And uh, it, it experience is everything in the circuit. And boy, with the Bud Moore Racing Team, they got so much experience. They can come off the trailer and, and uh, they can be in the ballpark. And that's what's important to me because I'm learning a lot and these guys are teaching me a lot. So it's working out really good. Yeah, you're also an uh, amateur meteorologist, right? I mean, what do you think about this? Uh, looks like it's picking back up again. Well, 
I'd have to say there's a lot of smarter fans out there than we are, I think, right now. But looking at the grandstands, they might be just sitting in the car. I don't know. But uh, this doesn't look good. Uh, I know we got the lights and everything, but it's still coming down pretty hard. And I know it's going to take a long time to dry. But, hey, we'll wait it out. All right. We'll uh, keep dry there, Wally. Thanks a lot. Bob? Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, still raining. And uh, so we will talk to more drivers. Bill, who you got this time? Us uh, standing down here with Rusty Wallace trying to stay out of the way of everybody in stage right at the same time. You have a good car. You have a good shot. I know you want it to stop. Yeah, I want, I want it to stop because, man, I tell you, I had a car that thought I could win the race. I'm sitting there running second, and uh, now I'm fifth. Uh, we had a restart problem up there, I guess. I don't know if Jeff missed a gear or what happened, but we got blown away on the inside lane, and I got back to fifth. But, hey, that's racing. I'm fifth. That's pretty good. Uh, the car was really, really quick today. The engine ran great. The uh, pit stops were wonderful. But... Uh, we gained a lot of points, and now I'm just going to go on home and load a bag and head to Japan. Okay, well, have a good time over there. Thank you very much. Okay, Rusty Wallace. Rusty, Dale Earnhardt, and NASCAR officials will be leaving tomorrow morning to go to Japan for a tire test on the Suzuka circuit. Back with more from Bristol in just a moment. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Food City 500 from Bristol International Raceway is being brought to you by McDonald's. On the track and in our restaurants, just watch us cook. By Brakes and Stratton, your number one source of power. Make sure all your outdoor power equipment has a Brakes and Stratton engine. And by Napa Auto Parts, we keep America running. The announcement has just been made. The uh, race has been called at this point at the conclusion of 343 laps, and Jeff Gordon is the winner. And look at his incredible climb in the points. 42nd in points after Daytona, 43rd after Rockingham. Then the climb began with a victory at Richmond. He finished third at Atlanta, moved to 16th in the points. At Darlington last week, his win moved him to 9th, and with the win today here at Bristol, Jeff Gordon is now 6th in the points. Let's go down to our McDonald's Winner Circle interview and Jerry Punch. This might be the most unusual victory lane we've done, sitting up here in a nice leather recliner, Jeff, but uh, you drove it hard all day. Congratulations. Well, right now it's the only dry place, but uh, I, I guess you're giving me the official word because I've still been waiting for that official word, but... Uh, it is official, right? Let me ask you. It is official. Okay, the math. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. You're the winner. Well, thank you, Jerry. Uh, you know, I, this isn't the way, of course, we want to win this thing, but we did have a strong car. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you kind of want to see that checkered flag, but uh, we, we did we did our part for, for what part of the race we did run, and I got to thank those guys on the on the DuPont Chevrolet. They they were great. They did a good job. Uh, you know, they, they got me in out of the pits when we needed to, uh, but we weren't the fastest car yesterday in that last practice. And we had a great car today, so I'm real proud of them. Uh, Goodyear tires were, were great today, and uh, forgot to thank Coca-Cola last weekend. So this is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, I, it's just not the same, I know, but uh, it's pretty amazing to the way things have been going for us. And, and uh, you know, I can't believe we, we're, we just won at Bristol this way. This is amazing. You know, you're sitting here waiting for the word, Jeff, and about uh, two minutes ago, Earnhardt walks in and just sticks out his hand and says, congratulations, you're the winner, I'm out of here. And uh, he congratulated you before you even knew you had won it. Yeah, I think he's got a little more pull than all of us, and he, he had the direct line to, <laughs> to who makes the calls, but uh, I think he's on his way to Japan. But I, I know when, when he told me that, I figured it was pretty official. That's as official as we need around here. Three wins in the last four outings, and the guy goes from – Ninth to sixth in the point standings as the climb continues for the reigning Winston Cup champion, Jeff Gordon, who wins today here at Bristol. And Jeff sitting in the uh, NASCAR trailer in a dry place. And uh, by golly, we are still getting rain outside here at Bristol. Let's take a look at the unofficial results. And guys, it's pretty amazing that uh, Jeff Gordon got off to such a poor start for the first two races. And wow, is he on a comeback, huh? Well, he really is, Bob. No doubt about that. Three wins in four races and a top five in the other one. And as Bristol races go, today was fairly uneventful, although Darrell Waltrip and Kenny Walls and a couple other cars involved in accidents wouldn't say so, but as Bristol goes, fairly uneventful. This is the uh, unofficial results. Again, this race has been called at this point 343 out of the 500 laps completed. Rain, rain, rain from beginning to the end, and it resulted in our first rain-shortened event since Martinsville almost a year ago last April. 
The points. The first four stay the same with Dale Earnhardt. 37 points now behind Dale Jarrett, Rudd, Craven, and Labonte. And now the six through 10. Several positions change here. Jeff Gordon moves up to six. Then it's Mark Martin, Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, and Ted Musgrave. We'll take next weekend off for Easter, but be back at North Wilkesboro for a big weekend starting on Friday at 3 o'clock with Winston Cup qualifying. The lows 150, 5 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday. NASCAR today at 12.30 on Sunday and the first Union 400 at 1 o'clock two weeks from today. Sports Center is coming up next. Thanks to Jerry Punch, John Kernan, Bill Weber, Ned Sheridan, Benny Parsons. I'm Bob Jenkins. Thanks for joining us. So long, everyone.